Theory and Mola. What's the situation? Hey, you still got to send me that intro. And Ryan. <laughs> and Ryan. Yeah. So I got to record it. That's really what's holding everything up. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah which phone. makes sense. He needs a lot of prep time for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just, I can't get the voice right. Mm -hmm. Did you see the photoshops of uh, you and Salacious? And Jabba? <laughs> I saw a couple of them. Um, I saw a couple of them out there. People, that was the the discussion uh, in the comments section, apparently. What the things I would do to Salacious be crumb. I have a feeling that one's going to hang around for a while. Like a monkey lizard. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when he showed up? His family showed up in uh, Mandalorian Season 3. Wasn't that great? Yes. <laughs> yeah, they were in the trees. <laughs> uh, Finally. Yeah, that's why. What do you do? So I saw Dune 2. Ooh. I assume that because the title of this <laughs> yes. Dune 2 review, and I was surprised by that because I already reviewed it. So was it. I. So I figured you saw it. Well, now we all have to review it. Holy schnitzel. Uh, yeah, so first off, you know, huge rest in peace to Akira Toriyama. Uh, I did a video on my Dragon Ball channel. Um, just assume you guys know who that is. Uh, creator I knew the creator of Dragon Ball who yeah. passed away, and it was like, there was so many people yeah. talking about it. I have yeah. never seen a single episode of Dragon Ball. Okay, I'm, so it's uh, I'm not irrelevant. familiar with it, but uh, obviously it's like, it's like if George Lucas died, you know? It literally is, yeah. It literally is. It's, yeah, it's which so is anyways. obviously never going to happen. So, ever. No. I hope not. I hope not. Um, yeah, so anyways, uh, I saw Dune. And, uh, Mahler, did you see it? Yeah, I've seen it. I don't think we you saw it last time we talked about it, did we? Did you? I, now I can't remember, but I'm going to go with Shaw. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what'd you think? Uh... uh <laughs> It, it was a film in which events took place, and I understood them, and was like, "Wow, those events really did take place." Uh, yeah, beautiful. I, don't, I thought it was. I thought it was enjoyable, but I wasn't like, "Holy fucking shit, this is the most amazing movie I've ever seen in my life." It, kind of like what people are talking about. I think in general, there's some overhype of it. Like Prisoner of the Moment, people are like, "Oh my god, it's one of the best sequels we've ever seen." Like type of thing. It's obviously nowhere in comparison to something like Two Towers. It's nowhere in comparison to something like Empire. But to me, theatrically, it was probably the best experience I've had in a theater in years in terms of being able to enjoy the cinematography, uh, how well the score worked with everything, and getting to see the story I really wanted to see play out on screen, which has been yeah. attempted multiple times by different people to varying levels of either wackiness or weirdness or just straight up fucking wild shit. Right. Um, I really liked it. Uh, I have some criticisms in the pacing and specifically one of the character changes as well as just a bunch of stuff we didn't get to see from the book. Um, but overall, as an adaptation of the source material, I give it like a six in terms of like the movie itself. I, I, I really fucking liked it. Oh, that's good. I'm glad you liked it. I, I just, yeah. I, what did I want to see from it? I think... I don't know. Maybe I just don't. Uh, I just don't understand Dune all that much because it's just so much. You kind of have to read the books. Well, it is. It's historically been felt like it's very tough to adapt that, right? Yeah. And it's because the way the books are written. Um, the books are written with a lot of internal dialogue and people's thoughts and and stuff like that. Uh, at the beginning of every chapter, you've got a journal entry from, you know, Irulan like it, from the future talking about things that have yet to happen that you don't even have context for yet. Um, but you might have context for that four chapters later and then you'll be like, oh shit, I know why they said that now. So it's, it's just kind of tough to get all of that onto a screen and they definitely simplified and streamlined a bunch of things for this. They compressed a timeline. Um, Dune is not nearly as much of a character driven story like we see from st something like Star Wars. Yeah. So I, I've always said I don't think that Dune is super appealable to everybody. Not in the same way Star Wars. Oh, I I liked it. I just, yeah, I think I just need to watch the first one. I didn't, I, I watched the first one, but I haven't done that since it came out. So I was kind of like, ah, remembering stuff. But ah, I enjoyed it. It's it's 100% a, like it starts 10 minutes after the first one ends. Yeah, literally. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, yeah. So if 
I can't imagine people that are like, I didn't see the first one, but people are talking about it. I guess I'll go see it. Who the fuck are all these people? <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> um, but so it truly is a part two. And this is a one book. This is the just the book Dune. That's what this is an adapt an adaptation of. It's Aren't not there like, like a, a other shit book. ton of books. There are, but this is just these two movies are just the first book. Dune. Hmm. Dune Messiah would be the one that they look to adapt next. Oh, so that would be the second book. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. Cool. Interesting. I kind of uh, confused. How, I mean, I'd love to do a video on like how people are like, "Oh, he, Paul Atreides is like Anakin." It's like, uh, why? Because they're both kind of the chosen one. I mean, one falls to the dark side and like <laughs> does everything wrong, and then the other one kind of rises to power. Well, they're probably referring to the future of uh, the story somewhat. Oh. Yeah, so th there are similarities, right? The the prophesies, you know, the prophecies that we have with both of these characters. Sure. Um, and yeah, Anakin obviously falls to the dark side. Paul, the visions that Paul sees is if he does this, if he takes control of the Fremen, if he embraces that, it will lead to a galactic scale jihad. It will lead to a holy war. And... That's happening now because of what he decisions he made. Um, that is going to happen oh. now. And, and that's why, like, that's what you see at the end of the movie. You see everybody going off. That is the start. It is. It's now going to be unleashed on the entire galaxy. You're going to have, they got the... I think 58 million people are going to die in this war uh, in the next coming years. But um, the emperor, I mean, he kissed his hand. So isn't, isn't it over? Well, they, I mean, it did happen, but but unfortunately, like right after that, they sent a message to the rest of the houses and the rest of the houses that didn't witness what happened. They they refused to acknowledge Paul's ascension. You know, stories. Oh, go that's what you're saying that they refused. All kinds of crazy shit could happen. Yeah. Are the other houses cool? Are they imposing? Um, they all have. You know, they're all different in their own ways. That cool. a lot of a lot of those different houses got left out of the book in terms of some of the other power players in the galaxy or sorry got left out of the movie like some of the other power players just because it's already fucking Fine. three hours long so you know what does share with star wars is cloned characters will be returning in future how about that mm. really yeah i won't spoil who but some of your favorites oh baron well maybe not him <laughs> who knows <laughs> <laughs> Well, who? I mean, I mean, I don't. I mean, guys, well, I mean, you, you can go will, read about it. Well, I'll, I'll admit that I just don't. Um, I try to say this to people because, as a media reviewer person, right? Everyone's like, cover, cover this, cover this, cover this, because. And there's some stuff where I'm just like, I'm sorry, I just can't bring myself to be passionate about Dune, and I'm not going to fake it. So I'm just like, I just don't care about Dune. It's just not something that I'm into. Never have been. And I've seen both movies, and I thought they were fine. Yeah. Like on an emotional level. On a filmmaking level, they're very impressive. I'd have plenty to say in terms of how skilled the work is, but simultaneously, like if my heart isn't in it, then it, it becomes difficult to talk about. I agree. Why is it that I don't feel so invested in the characters? I can't really uh, eloquently explain that. Can you? I'm Well, I mean, my explanation is uh, sort of dry as it is would just be there's not enough character in the film for me. There's not mm -hmm. After an hour of understanding Paul gaining the trust and the sort of messianic point of view from several Fremen and then yeah. several like splitting apart. I was like, okay, but like, I need to care about that in order for that to have been a compelling hour, as opposed to an hour. Where I'm like, that's over. Can we finally get some Harkonnens? Which right. I really liked Baron Harkonnen in the first one. I thought it was super cool, super interesting, mm -hmm. horrifying, you know, but like he and Batista, who I can't even remember his name, which is unfortunate. Dude, Raban. Beast yeah, Raban. Um, I felt like uh, the Baron got wasted and Batista got like embarrassed in that film. Literally. To the point, well, before I'd seen it, I mentioned this on Open Bar, I think. There was a post that people were making fun of because it's just him yelling. And I was like, that, that post is fair. Like that, that is basically him for most the, of the movie. The only role yeah. that is like appropriate to cast Dave Batista in is probably that. Um, well, <laughs> I'd like to see him do something else, you know? I don't and I mean, since we're, we're, in, we're in spoiler territory, right? The three of us have seen it, it's been out for a decent bit. But yeah, yeah. the fact that, like, I'm waiting for his story to get wrapped with Gurney Halleck, and it's practically a fucking, like, DLC to the film. It's like, we're, we're mostly wrapping up the story. Oh, yeah, there's that. Uh, he killed him. 
anyway like what okay okay that felt really weird because it's like some of the character i was kind of invested in you know what's funny is in the book um you don't even get to see that happen you just know an altercation occurs mm -hmm. um the final battle you know how the final battle seemed quick like the the bring in the storm sandworms fucking Oh, they're yeah, about yeah. to fuck their shit up. You get a couple like bodies going everywhere. And the next thing you know, Paul's kind of just like marching in there after they've won. That whole sequence just gets completely like glossed over in the book. Um, so it's kind of funny um, to see because those are some of the complaints, right? It's like that didn't last long enough. That didn't last long enough. It's like, God, it didn't, it didn't last at all in the book at all. <laughs> it's kind of funny. You don't even see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you just, well, in the movie, I think Christopher Walken up. got wasted. Um, he just felt like Christopher Walken. Mm -hmm. Um, I there was really I, no I would for say for less of that. I, I he was very understated, which is fine. It's just I don't know. It's just it wasn't much for me to feel. Um, he didn't feel like an emperor that I should be, you know, scared of. I feel bad now. So the emperor is kind of a, even though technically he has all the power. He's really controlled. Like his 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 bloodline is controlled by the Bene Gesuit. Like he, he, they're they're not allowing him to have any fucking like sons and shit like that. He's got a daughter who's also Bene Gesuit, who is completely in on their scheme and shit. So even though he is the leader and has been the leader for like so long, um, it's almost like this artificial power because even though he's in charge, he feels trapped because he doesn't really have any freedom. But they did not get into any of that in the movie. Well, it was enjoyable. I, I tried to get a popcorn bucket, but they were sold out, so. Well, I got mine. Used. You got one? Yeah. Used. I'll sell you it to for more than I bought it if it's used. I'll buy it. I wanted to make a Free promo. Lubed. A, a, all right. <laughs> I wanted to make a promo <laughs> with a saber in it. <laughs> so you're saying you needed more dialogue, Mahler? More people doing things that matter to them personally that I can Doing get behind things. that are beyond the sort of great political warfare that I feel like I don't have a great understanding of. I, I feel like I didn't really know what was going on in the film, but simultaneously knew enough to understand like why people did what they did, which is a really weird spot to be in, like the state of the universe, I guess. You know, this is something that I wish the prequels delved into more, but I mean, I'm not going to deny the prequels did it like more than Dune and Dune 2 put together did. Well, I guess we'll see what happens. I'm really excited for Wolverine and Deadpool. That's fair enough. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot of cool cameos. Um, I yeah. think the movie's probably going to be shit, um, especially with the TVA involvement and everything. But... Oh, yeah. Right. I forgot. Yeah, see, yeah. that's all it took. One mention, yeah, you're like, oh shit, yeah. Yeah, I don't like this time travel stuff. Oh my god, why do I have to explain everything? People are like, it's not about the universe, it's about Dune. It's like, what do you think I mean? Ryan, I'm going to give you a chance. What do you think I meant? What you're talking about is the greater political structure of what's going on and like the motivations behind this house and this house and what exactly the Harkonnens are trying to do and like wield their power. What's the Emperor's entire role in all this shit? And how about all these other houses, how they actually feel instead of just showing up two seconds at the end and getting a mention and realizing, oh, we're, the entire galaxy is going to fall into war. All right, I'm hiring you as my translator. <laughs> there you go, perfect. I'm, I'm pretty cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Never could get into Dune. Might have to watch the new Dune. I hope you all are doing well. Hope in the next episode, Bad Batch is really good. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you didn't even fucking remember that we talk about Bad Batch. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, that, that's oh yeah, that. right. Uh, wow. What Let's again? talk about it, huh? I mm -hmm. completely forgot what happened. So they met up. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah, I actually like this one. It's called the Return. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I enjoyed this one. What'd you think? It seemed to have a real big impact on you. Um, so this, me and Mahler were talking a little bit before we started the stream while you're still setting up, but it I'm was sleeping. No, while you were like, uh, right after we got in the stream yard call and you were um, getting your Running background away. fixed up. But the these really should be released like three episodes at a time, I think. Um, because I, I feel like not 
too much happens uh, in this one. However, I feel like we're going to look back and the episode we did last week, this episode, and probably the next episode are probably going to have like one pretty nice fucking little arc in it. Probably. I think that would be much more satisfying to consume and review than like that. Probably. However, this one in isolation, we 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 got what we expected right after after we saw Hunter and Wrecker and Omega reunite, Crosshair standing by himself. How is this going to be? And you see that you see that Wrecker immediately is accepting of Crosshair. Omega likes so that's good enough for me. Mm. Right, so that's that's just Wrecker's lot in life if omega trusts him and omega literally trusts everybody because she's a naive fucking retard uh, but if omega <laughs> if omega trusts him that's good enough for wrecker hunter not so much hunter's holding a grudge and how are crosshair and hunter may as well be though gonna work there you know gonna work their uh but now they're bro yeah yep. one one you know little worm one dune sandworm that was in the snow and uh they're back together bros again yeah uh, yeah, but that, that's kind of how it works with friends. It's with guys, at least. You know, you literally you fist fight, and then you're like, "Yeah, you're not so bad." We got Echo back. Yeah, Mahler. What did What did you think about Echo? That's the first time you've seen Echo. Awesome. Um, it's funny because of the things I was trying to compliment from the previous episode, kind of fucking just wasted in this one, huh? Like, yeah, I was I was sitting there thinking like, this is a chance for them to show off what they can do with how two characters can re reconcile when they clearly don't trust each other. And it's weird how much dialogue is set to establish how much they don't trust each other while simultaneously absolutely trusting each other throughout the whole episode. Like, we can't have, like, can he really have a rifle? It's like, oh, can he really guide this mission? Oh, he didn't reveal to us several aspects of this mission beforehand that he should have. Oh, you know, we got to go do this job. Can we trust that he's going to go out there and do it? Hey, wait, I need to talk to you. Are you going to betray us? Like, all this dialogue. And you're like, why the fuck is he even on the mission with you? Like, what? You, you you half expect that he's going to kill you all. And you're like, yeah, yeah, we'll bring him along. Fuck it. And then we'll have our personal differences sorted while we're <laughs> trying to download all this shit, which I don't even know where to begin. The, no, I mean, it's probably the worst episode. I'm like, <laughs> oh, no. the, the, nothing made me fucking sense. Oh, I was no. like, so what's the mission? It's like, we got to get to a base that's abandoned because we need to access the data pad from Nala Say that's going to likely have coordinates to the Tantis base, was it, or something? Yeah. Yes. And I was like, did they really just tell me they're going to break into an Empire base to read the data pad they had? It's like, why not just fucking get the information from the base? So what was explained was that the it's encrypted. It's top secret. And they can't break the encryption without someone like Tech who's dead, supposedly dead. Not that. Um, you know, they, they lost their Donatello, so they can't I have so do many follow-up questions. No, so they can't break the encryption of that tech. So, but it can be read according to Crosshair. You can read a data pad on an Imperial terminal. Yeah, right. Like bypasses. So, I know this. Yeah. There's so many things that are wrong with this. Like, so if we go to the the like, if we, let's, let's say us three, we're bounty hunters, and we're like, we got this yeah. pad from Nala Say, who's known to be working on a project that we hope has access on a little data pad that'll give us information for things. First thing I'd be like is like. Why would she have access to all of that on her data pad? That's kind of weird. Like, they wouldn't limit her. And then why would she still have it after it's been stolen and taken from the base? Would it be deactivated by now? Yeah, that's what that's yeah, that's what I thought too. Like, okay, it's probably deactivated now, like you a know hotel what? room key. And, you can and work also with that. still and also we have to also acknowledge that there's no reason for her to have as much access to everything as she already did. No, because, of course. And like I, literally her data pad gave her access to all of the entire base, from dog is, kennels to uh, blood samples. Yeah. If one of you guys, as the three of us said, all right, plan, let's go to an abandoned empire base. We can plug the data pad in, which will bypass the security and we can access the information on it. I'd be like, are you fucking nuts? Why don't we just go to like a droid? Yeah. It's like, it'll it's, be safer. <laughs> it's also silly that like, all you have to do is plug it into any terminal, right? Like that's, that, well, that I, doesn't really make any sense either. That all still should need like a, yeah, you still should need a freaking passcode or something like that. Cause Mount Tantus yeah. is like the most high level security base in the galaxy. It should be and the most hidden. So it's like, okay. So I was already just... struggling with all that. And then they're like, Omega's like, oh, I'm coming with you. And it's like, no, you're not. You're a fucking kid. Stop. And then she's like, I need to. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> like everybody just does whatever <laughs> Omega says. Yep. Like, Bottom line, that's it's, how it works. Um, she's yeah, that's what, that's what annoys me. 
I'm just really sad not. because I feel like there's a lot of opportunity to tell her she can't be doing these things. They have to protect her. She's too important to them as people, right? A lot of guys don't like kids going into war with them, <laughs> like like actual children. Not just because of the fact that they're unreliable in terms of you know being your comrade and everything, but because you don't want them to go into these dangerous missions. You know, you're like fuck you, stay home, you little brat. <laughs> but she's like, no, nah, yeah, dude. Literally, I'm just like, can you not get involved all the time? Like, who made her the brains of the whole organization? Right. <laughs> That's how it she, goes, I guess. She might as well be the brains for Wrecker. She literally. She is. She talked Wrecker basically through this big procedure to turn that thing back on. And in my mind, why would you trust Wrecker to let Wrecker run around from a fucking snake? Right? That's like right up Wrecker's territory, just fucking running around pointless, mindless shit. Instead of him being the one that's in, in charge of rebooting this fucking system, it has to be walked through it like somebody trying to land an airplane, uh, like being talked in from the tower. But Plus Omega did a good but enough that's, job. That's what they do though with him. Like Wrecker is like the typical uh juice head gym guy that like doesn't have much of a brain. <laughs> that's I agree. Like, that's, that's literally that's, it's like that's what, what they I'm did saying for was like I wouldn't trust Wrecker with that job. Right. Where you have to like listen to Omega, do a complex series of instructions. Yeah. Oh Omega. yeah, like, no, I know. I, I would have somebody else do that. I thought they yeah, were going to do that awesome. joke where he goes to the breaker thing and she's like, you know, restart the whatever. And then he's going to go, which lever is that? And then she's like, the big red one. He goes, okay. Like, just something like that. <laughs> yeah, they made him like a complete idiot. Kind of like what they did with Thor in Love and Thunder. Yeah. Um, so, the, you know, they get, they get to the base and the first thing they see is like, wow, the base is like electricity is almost out. A lot of it's been drained by the like outer perimeter defense. And they're like, oh, just turn that off. I was like... Turn it off. You don't even know why it's up. Like, what? What do you think? There's a reason that that exists. Why would you just turn that off? It's not like it was a big problem. That was the thing for me. It wasn't a big problem when they got there. Like, they were able no. to land. All they're yep. literally all they're going to do is fucking stick a data pad in a fucking <laughs> terminal. It's like, why, why well, is and, all this other shit happening? And once everything shit hits the fan, they establish a new way for the power to be reestablished. I was like, oh, pity that wasn't something you did straight away. I guess because then that would just make the whole drama stop. And then it was equally funny where they're like, all right, so we need, right? This is the plan. One of us needs to get to the fuse box, which is dangerously out there, reset it, come back. But then we also need to lure the, the worm outside of the perimeter, restart the perimeter, so that'll allow us to leave. And it's like, mm hmm, mm hmm. So, so all of those moves, you're going to be risking getting killed by the worm, right? It's like, yes. So why not just leave? You don't got to think about it too much. <laughs> I figured. <laughs> 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 The only, the, yeah. only, the only response to that could be like, well, I mean, it could be dangerous, right? Because the whip might get him. It's like, that's what they do it anyway, so. That is probably the nicest compliment anyone's ever given me. Thank you. Were they, um, were they still waiting to download anything by the time they were doing all the power shit? No, they I'm pretty sure they were all everything. good. As far as I know, they were all good to go. Remember, because they read about like a manifesto of, of like all the different that was another thing. The only information they could get was that there were more clones on Tantus. And it's like, okay, do we have coordinates? No. Any information about the building? No. No, but okay. But thanks to you, Omega, we're closer now than we were before. <laughs> I did like that, yeah. <laughs> thanks to you, what you said, what Cross has said in this data pad. We're, I'm sure we're gonna find it. You you did all you could. You got out of there, kid. God, I love this show. Seriously. And so yeah, I was waiting for like is there any, gonna be anything meaningful in the whole episode and then they did the little thing at the end of like man I, you know i did some things in my past and then hunter's like we've all done stuff man it's just about you know moving forward like yeah man yeah that was beautiful no that was like the whole trope of star wars don't you think no the what makes that beautiful we never like give this kind of award to simple ideas right you know remember tlj is about a lot of what you could call beautiful ideas like, True. don't let your failure define your whole life. But we don't celebrate it because yeah. that's its idea. We sell it. We, we don't celebrate. We talk about what it did to represent that idea. And, you know, like, kill the past. People are like, that's not the message of the movie. That's just the message of the bad guy. And it's like, well, then why does it kill the past throughout the whole movie? So, yeah, like, literally. Yeah. So, you know, their conversation, it feels like it was built on nothing but them arguing with each other about how much they don't like each other, Hunter establishing how much he does not trust Crosshair for good reason, and then at the end, it's like, well, that was a tough whim that we killed together, that you're more than potentially motivated. By the way, he establishes at one point, there's a good chance that uh, <laughs> Crosshair's lied to them. 
like for good reason lied to them, get them in trouble slash betray them. There's mm -hmm. every reason he could betray them to the Empire. They have no reason to think otherwise. Yeah. And they could still be doing that. Leading them to Tantus could be a trap. They have no idea. And yet, at the end, he's like, yeah, man. Yeah, we're friends again. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? No. It, it well, was, it, yeah. yeah. Hunt, well, and the thing was, Hunter was like the only one that really had any reservations. Um, I guess we didn't really get to delve into how Echo felt about it. Um, no, but, I just don't think so, he gives a shit. He's too machine. Wrecker didn't give a fuck. Whatever Omega says goes. That <laughs> fucking Wrecker's good with that. Yeah. And then, and so Hunter's the only one who's sitting there questioning these things, and it did not do enough to probably satisfy the suspicions he should have had, but it goes right in line, I guess, with everything else we've seen from this team, which is they're not that smart. I think it was the worst to have Hunter be the one to tell uh, Crosshair that what you've done in the past doesn't matter anymore because I've also done things when he spent the whole episode and past season being the main one to judge him for his past actions. Like, it feels like we need a bigger and stronger and more substantive set of events to push Hunter into that position to be like, you know what, actually our past is our past. And we need to move. Not just a fucking whim attacked us and we ran away. Like, I yeah. don't know. It's nothing for me. Like, you got to get more than that. Well, I think, you know, the, really the whole point of the show is just like, it's kind of childish in a sense where there's that childish innocence where it's like, you know, forgive and forget and... Do we have enough of that know, from Omega? <laughs> get, and get burned and, and then That's do it again them. and then get burned again and... Well, I imagine that's part of what draws me to cross here the most out of every character is because he seems to be like closest to a realist out of everybody. Everyone else is like on goofy clown land, but he sometimes says things where I'm like, hey, that's true. But at this point, I have a feeling that the show thinks of him as kind of like the idiot pessimist who will learn as the episodes go on to be nicer. Yeah, Crosshair's like Crosshair's the only real person in this, um, but you're meant to think <laughs> like but you're meant to want him to change. Yeah. <laughs> Even though yeah. he's the one that everyone else should be striving to be, I, to be honest I with really you. like I like Crosshair, dude. He's 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 good. Why is there um, Crosshair on both his face and his helmet? Because he's Crosshair. <laughs> <laughs> did they ever did they ever explain how he has like the thing on his? No. So, so we got it tattooed. Maybe the I'm Empire crosshair. did it to him. I'm Crosshair. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, yeah, chat. Right is is uh anyone able to be our thumbnail guy? I would love for that to happen. I don't know, Mahler, if you have anyone that uh, I know. Gary has some really great thumbnails. Well, you've got to get someone the thumbnail yeah. template. You just need to switch out the picture every time, right? Oh uh, no, I want something special. So like today would be Dunes. So it'd be like me. Like I could be like the bald albino guys. And oh, then, like, I haven't got anyone like that now. Ryan could be like Paul Atreides or something, and you know, I, some something a little more. Um, on my blue eyes. Yeah, yeah, blue eyes. Yeah. Mm. If anyone's if anyone's good at thumbnail stuff uh, and Photoshop, you know, I I usually send out a, a a little advertisement, and then I get people that are like, I've never used Photoshop before, but I'd love to do it. And I'm like, what the fuck, dude? No, I I need someone who Ryan isn't racist enough to be Paul. <laughs> well, we could work on it. <laughs> He's uh. Is the Batman 2 coming out, like, next year? <laughs> next year. Yeah, I think so. There you go. Yeah, uh, well. I still don't, I don't even remember what you said. Who cares? Let's just leave it in the dust. About Batman? Yeah. I, the racist yeah. dust. The most racist shit you could possibly imagine. Uh, I, j I simply made note of all the different characters in the movie that were, like, kind of protagonists. And I was like, wow, it seems like, for the most part, other than Batman and Alfred, you've got two race swap characters... That are you know your your good guys are you supposed to be rooting for and you've got the black mare it's like that's strange. Pretty much all I said, and uh, <laughs> went a little viral. Racist. I think the 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 more interesting part was everyone said he hates the movie because of that. that you and know. I was like, I gave it an eight out of ten. I liked it. I really liked the movie. <laughs> that was the most offensive part that they thought I hated it. Yeah, it's weird. Like that. Like that was like we me with Andor. Is that I said I liked it. And then everyone's like, he hated it. I'm like, what the fuck? 
You talk so much about bricks and screws, man. So they get L- you. I literally mentioned that like once. I'm like, it doesn't have the bricks that were in the prequel trilogy. <laughs> it's old. It just has these works. bricks from like a construction did. I was dude. It was, I was, your, it was your tone of voice. Mention it once. The same for all of us. Just the, f- the Frenchman with the hat and the cheese. That's... <laughs> that was the one. That's, That's funny though. It. <laughs> it's like, oh, the film school with their wine and their cheese. I yeah. get it. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. it's good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That one hit a nerve. <laughs> that one hit a nerve for people. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> Is um, <laughs> yeah, I do digital art all the time. Um, just look at his thumbnail. It's the yeah, look at that. Uh, clearly, yeah. Uh, I put my face in my fiance's face. Open Anakin and Padme embracing before perfectly. I mean, <laughs> I'm just you imagining read the rest like. Of it. Let me know if you want to see it. I also turned myself into a seamless job of the hut. <laughs> seamless job of the hut. I mean, uh, like. yeah, you know, if you could you maybe do a post... test. Who can yeah, do the Photoshop of Ryan and Salacious Crumb? Yeah. Are we looking for funny? Are we looking for realistic? <laughs> we're, lo- we're looking for, like, I, I love I love Gary's nerdrotic thumbnails. I think those are, those are great. There you go. Um, kind of like the ones I used to do for my gaming channel but his are just so much more professional so i just so if someone wants to if you want to try out to be our photoshop guy maybe just make something and tag us on uh on x uh and and i'll see i'll go i'll even go through it on stream if you can do it that quickly i think it would be fun to do while we talk um tag us all tag us all Irene Muller, how do you stay focused with ryan constantly masturbating to salacious crumb love you guys Who's that keeps me going with? man yeah, I mean that's kind of the highlight of the stream. Yeah. Yeah. Hello there, Grifters. Thanks for doing this show, and it's great to see Strength Theory videos back again. Yeah, filming another one tonight. Oh, by the way, the artist Bayowin that made the drawing that freaked you both out, uh, they made another one. <laughs> oh, I just saw your link. Oh my god. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm not sure what to make of it either. Chat, this is true artwork. Uh, let me know if you want to see it. It's uh, you can't go back after this one. So oh, they want to see this, yeah. You can guarantee I it. I feel like these would be great for t-shirts. <laughs> How do you explain this? <laughs> Im- imagine getting caught outside wearing this as a t-shirt. What are you gonna have to explain to people? Look at how yellow I am, though. Yeah, you have real jaundice. Yeah. I like how Theory's crying. Yeah, what else is new? <laughs> what else is new? I like, you know what? I like this one much more than the other one. It's beautiful, really. I like a little belt buckle. That's some high what, quality so dog material there. Mine is a, a lightsaber. Mine's an okay sign. Mine. And mine's Ryan's fucking is... live long and prosper shit, right? Ryan's is, is <laughs> look at this and you get punched in the arm. Isn't it like Well the okay symbol got what well, turned into a racist symbol like five years ago, whatever. But I don't think it actually is, right? That was a good no, really? It's not. It was like a me a fortune yeah, meme to is. bait a bunch of like retards into believing that the okay they symbol cut. was like a symbol for white power. That was funny because it was like, can we get them to get rid of the okay symbol? <laughs> it's like they actually did try, but you ain't taking the okay symbol. Why is that? Uh, how did that happen? Like they, I think it's they literally like on 4chan, somebody yeah, like wrote a troll. a troll post about just so everybody knows these, you know, crazy alt right racists. They have ways of like showing who they are, and the okay symbol is actually a secret symbol for white power. And they mm-hmm. say like the the three is like a W, and the shape that your that the hole makes would like make a P with your wrist. It's the dumbest yeah, troll right. ever, oh, yeah, yeah. and they actually got like mainstream media oh. outlets parodying their shit, stuff like that. <laughs> Fuck. All right. Um, hey, you know what? I think his his art is starting to grow on me. Chat, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Type one if you like it. Type two if you are afraid. Thanks, great. What's his name? Oh, uh, Bayon. B U W E N. I actually like it. Uh, well, he watches the show, so he'll know soon enough. Yeah, I, I actually like that one. Uh, chat, would you? We, I'd love to hire him for. Uh, 
for t-shirt design. <laughs> for yes, us. T-shirts, baby. Yeah, I think those would do really well. I, I Heck, I'd wear it. I mean, it kind of uh, explains the show. It's, Does it? it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's you totally, weird, man. Weird, unorthodox show that uh, works somehow. <clears throat> Chad, how many of you would uh, wear that on a t-shirt? Just uh, type one. Just to see. We should hire him. And... <laughs> you guys going to be doing private or public in Battlefront? Public. 100%. Yeah. It comes out at midnight, I think, on Wednesday. So like 11.59 p.m. So I'll be streaming probably for like four hours. Probably right, until like four or five in the morning. Oh yeah. I can't wait. Yeah. How does me wearing a plaid shirt look like I'm gonna rant about pronouns? Are you talking about the image? Or is it about you right now? Theory in that shirt looks like you're gonna rant about pronouns. Um I don't know. I don't know. Typer, if you're gay. Typer. Well, it didn't work out as you expected, I guess. Uh, what's up, Rossi? You guys going to be doing private or do public? I like the idea of live action Clone Wars or move on. You guys are going to be streaming okay. Battlefront 2, yeah? Um, I, don't know, I don't know how much I'll stream it, but I'll play it a little bit. Yeah, I'll play it with you. I'm not sure if I'll stream it, maybe. Okay. Yeah, let me know if you... Would one of you please read Luthen's speech in your best Omega voice? <laughs> we can do Marva's and Jar Jar voice. Love y'all. Keep up the grift. <laughs> that's, that's totally Ryan's job. Luthen Beach. Um. Is this it? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. And I guess they want they want it said as Omega. Jeez. Oh, good yeah. luck, Ryan. That's a little rough. Wait, me? Oh. Uh, well, in Omega's voice. Calm, kindness. Calm, kindness, kinship, love. I've given up all chance at inner peace. I made my mind a sunless space. I share my dreams with Ghost Wrecker. I wake up every day to an equation I wrote 15 years ago from which there's only one conclusion. I'm damned for what I do. My anger, my ego, my unwillingness to yield, my eagerness to fight. They've set me on a path from which there is no escape. I yearn to be a savior for Batcha against injustice <laughs> without contemplating the cost. And by the time I looked down, there was no longer any ground beneath my feet. What is my sacrifice? I'm condemned to use the tools of my enemy to defeat them. I burn my decency for someone else's future. I burn my life. To make a sunrise, I know I'll never see. And the ego that st that started this fight <laughs> will never have a mirror or an audience or the light of gratitude. So what do I sacrifice? Everything. <laughs> man, right, you just couldn't commit to an accent. <laughs> yeah, fuck. I man. don't fucking know. What am I, supposed I loved to it. Do? It was perfect. Very well now it makes me like Omega. That was me committing. What was it Marva's is Jar Jar? Oh, they don't give both of you. I ain't doing that. I guess. Okay. Theory, you got a good Jar Jar? Misa name is Marva. Oh, God. That's all you get. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really have a good Jar Jar, I don't think. I don't have a good Omega. It didn't stop me. <laughs> Bro, hers is so long. My name is Marva Karasi Andor. I'm honored to stand before you. I'm honored to... No, I'm not doing this shit. 
I'm not doing this. That's way too loud. It wasn't even like the first line. Uh, oh, well. Um, muy, muy humility. Muy, muy. <laughs> <laughs> muy, muy humility, daughter of Ferex, and honor to be worthy of the stone. Strange. Misa feel as if I can see it. Misa's was six. <laughs> he should have been an Andor. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Um, you would have liked it then. Do you think with the post that Ahmed Best made that he's coming back? Pretty sure it's for a video game. Uh, They're not fucking filming anything right now, so. Hmm. Maybe Jar Jar is going to be in the new Jedi game. Um, yeah, so a new Star Wars video game is in development from Activision. And Am Ahmed oh. Best is set to reprise his role as Jar Jar Binks in the project. Oh, shit. Uh, so that's what that was for. Oh, wow. Really? Mm hmm. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. Well, there you go, Daily Dose. I hope your, your five bucks went to a, a good place. A good it's home. cool that you have Ryan on, but when will the great Pharaoh be returning? Those are kind of like just, you know, uh, once in a blue moon sort of things. If you're, if you're lucky and you catch it, you catch it. Special days. Mm hmm. I like Dune 2, but the comparisons to Empire Strikes Back is wild to me. Could you imagine the original trilogy made in today's era? I could just imagine Battle of Hoth. Um, I could. It would probably be a shit ton of CGI. But, you know, it would have to be done by George, of course. Uh, I just don't think... I don't know. I There's something really special about the original trilogy and how simple it was. And I think the reliance on technology kind of takes away from the story that could be told because you, you don't have the visuals that you have to, you didn't have it back then that you have today. So I feel like, you know, you got to focus more on the story. And, uh, I think that's what the original trilogy really had going for it. I think it's crazy that like D Dune looked fucking amazing. Like I can't recall a single yeah. shot where I was like, ah, oh, the VFX, uh, like mm -hmm. yeah. everything looked fucking phenomenal for about $180 million compared to, 300 million plus for things like the Marvels. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not like that cast was like a no name, like a no name cast or anything. Like there's a people in there would probably cost a pretty penny to get their hands on. Bro, Javier Bardem is one of the best actors I've, I think I've ever seen. I'm inclined to agree. Mm -hmm. One of the better wicked ones right now. No Country for Old Men. I really love that movie. That's what like launched his career, right? That role. I would say so. I guess well, he's been an actor for decades. Put him on Without... the map. You know the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like it made I know him. What you mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of like bricks and screws with me and uh, the Batman <laughs> review for Ryan. <laughs> Some piece Toriyama. There's an <coughs> update on Jake Lloyd. He's doing well. What happened with Jake Lloyd? Well, I don't know about doing well, but there was an update that after like 10 months of rehab that he's like feeling good. The unfortunate thing was it was reported he got an Ahsoka toy for his birthday. Um, so I don't know exactly if that's putting him in a better state of mind or not. I'd be a little upset if somebody gave me that, but I think he liked it. Yeah, I know nothing about it. I know nothing about this. I uh, didn't know he was um, even... You guys even on the internet? Nope. No. Uh... Yeah. Um, let's see. He loves Star Wars. Uh, the Phantom Menace actor Jake Lloyd's mother shares on heartbreaking story. Gives optimistic update. Um, let's see. Speaking of scripts news, Lisa Lloyd explained that her son is being diagnosed with schizophrenia. It oh. would have happened anyway. She insists and explains there's a history of schizophrenia on the biological father's side of the family. She doesn't blame Star Wars at all and insists that any backlash of the prequels had no effect on her son. He was just riding his bike outside, playing with his friends, she explains. Wow, it's wild. That goes completely against the media's narrative, doesn't it? Um, yeah, I've heard the opposite of that forever, but... I mean, his mother's probably a pretty good uh, authority on it. I would say so. Better than uh, any article that some fucking idiot wrote. Yeah, there's a, there's a whole story about like his psychotic break and all these things. Uh, but Lisa Lloyd's interview ends on an optimistic note. According to his mother, he's doing much better than she expected. Her son is able to socialize and even watch movies again. He previously lacked the concentration. 
He loves all the new Star Wars stuff. Well, I'm sorry about that, Jake. Um, Lisa observes and reveals he's recently been watching Ahsoka. She even gave him an action figure of Ahsoka Tano, Anakin Skywalker's Jedi Padawan, as a birthday present. Oh, there you go. Well, I wish him all the best, man. I don't think he deserved any of the shit that he got. So I hope he's able to find peace now in life. Well, I think most of the shit he got was from, like, obviously, people were, some people are critical of the role. Most of the shit he got was from the media. Fucking Same journalists. Thing with Ahmed Best. Ahmed Best said he almost killed himself because of the mainstream I just, media. Yeah, these fucking journalists, man. They're pieces of shit. I don't like know of any people who rip into like the movies in a critical way, have a part of their videos where they're like, make sure to find the actors on social media and berate them indefinitely. It's like, that's just not a thing. Yeah. I, basically, the reason I'm bringing that up is because I've always considered anyone who's doing that, it's not even like, oh, it's these people's fans or these people. It's just like, it's just fucking crazy people. Yeah. And they're everywhere. It happens in all things, right? Like the famously evil characters will often get people being like, fuck you, man. Yep. And it's just like, okay. I know. I know. Um, oh. All right. Hey. What's with my face there? Those, those mm. aren't my real teeth. Like that they made me make like that. I don't think they do that. Yeah, that's know. Mo Zamboni. He sent a super chat saying that he makes art like this. There yeah. Yeah. Fuck Mary Kill will live in infamy here. Mm. Looking through it now. <laughs> Just looking at memes while. <laughs> No, I'm just trying to find if anyone uh, tagged us in some Photoshop. If mm. anyone, uh, doing a job. Dune 2 was way too long and it focused too much on secondary characters, especially the females for man-hating agenda. Mm, I wouldn't say that. I'm, not, really sure, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the story of Dune. Uh, the Benny Jesuit are literally an all-female organization that is like trying to control the entire outcome of everything. They control the emperor. Uh, yeah. They I, have a lot of people held hostage. Like, like they, they use sex. They use their abilities. They use everything they can to manipulate. This is like a thousand year fucking plan that Lady Jessica fucks up by having Paul. Well, um, I'm like, I, I wanted more for the secondary characters. I had a lot for the main character. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. saying it focused too much on secondary is weird to me. It did indeed. I didn't watch the Oscars. That's good. Congratulations. Has anyone here read Dune Chapter House? I think the most purists haven't. Given the ending, I think Herbert would get a chuckle at everyone's reactions to the movie. I'm not. Ryan? I haven't I read Dune that. Chapter House, no. So Talzin said that she had no force connection but used black magic. Then Maul said that their magic is a derivative of the force. Which one is it? Ah. <sighs> Jeez, I mean, I think that's just maybe Maul's interpretation. I would imagine that magic probably is a derivative of the Force, but it not, it's not the Force. Well, that clears it up. What do you think? I, I, I would absolutely rule out magic in a world where we already have a magic system. That's an incredibly bad idea from a writing standpoint. But uh, it's not impossible to nail it I or think anything. It's, I think it's fucking fun, man. Because it's like you have the Force, which... You don't need any sort of spells or any sort of like visual green smoky energy. And then you have magic, which is like you can do some weird ass stuff that you can't do with the force. But then again, I don't. I think if you're as powerful as Mother Talzin, you could you could be. I mean, she was a formidable opponent against Palpatine. So magic could be as dangerous as the force, maybe even rival it. But we just don't know enough. Yeah, I, I hate how they've kind of introduced that type of magic in the world. So one of the things I like that they kind of explored um, in, in the expanding universe was there are different, basically that the Jedi aren't the only type of, you know, religious sect, for lack of a better word, to like study the force and find out how to use it. There's other ones throughout the galaxy, like very small communities, but they they have like a little bit it's almost like they're using a different aspect of the force or seeing a different aspect of the force um, and be able to do different things with it. Um, 
for instance, some of them develop the ability to, instead of telekinetically like drag something, they can actually almost, almost like apparition or disapparition in Harry Potter and yeah. almost like focus something to like will it to disassemble and reassemble in their hands type of thing. Um, but that was all still the same kind of cosmic energy. It was just viewed in slightly different ways by these small sects of people in other parts of the galaxy that had kind of discovered their way to the force without the Jedi Sith type of view of it. Mm -hmm. But I'm not a big fan of the night sister magic that we have. Really? And I love it. I think it's so fun. It brings a whole different element to the whole thing. Silence. Okay. All right. But it, uh, it does bring tell it. us what it, what does it bring? Because I don't know what it is. A whole level of uh, imagination, something else that we don't know about, something that rivals the Force. It's I think it's cool. Well, so now you can, isn't, isn't that what the reanimate force, dead bodies? Doesn't the Force do that already? Like it's a the survival is done through the users of the Force. No, because there's just so many different things you could do with magic that you can't do with the Force. But I thought the magic was the force. Mm, no, not in the same way. I don't think so. I mean, we haven't gotten a proper explanation of the difference, really. But um, no, I, I, I think, I think with magic, it's more like I would even say it's more dark than the dark side. It's more like witchy. Like I mean, you can't do what like what she did with Maul, bringing him back and tapping his head and bringing him back as like some like literally like creating legs for him. You can't do that with the force. Yeah. yeah. But like why why <laughs> Okay, so like take any IP of any kind and yeah. add that in. Is that IP now better? What well, doesn't make the IP better? It just makes it another element that's interesting. Surely it's like going to be dependent on execution how it plays into all the rules as established, right? Like and and how yeah. this plays in the future. It right. sounds to me like an insane thing to add because it changes everything. I see it as the same as like adding force healing late in the game. So you can't do that. Yeah, we already have this cosmic. We already have this like cosmic energy that people are using to manipulate, do like superhuman shit and wild stuff with it. Um, and we've kind of seen the power levels go up. And we talked about that um, yeah. for like the prequels, things we're able to see in the prequels versus what we saw in the OT. So why do we feel the need to introduce yet another form of, well, hey, guess what? We can get crazier, guys. Really, the what have we seen magic do other than um, reanimate people, for lack of a better term? What else have we seen done with I magic mean, that uh, you can accomplish in some dude, other way with the Force? I mean, Mother Talzin gave Dooku boils on his face, like from halfway across the galaxy. I mean, you can, you can yeah. put a hex on someone. You can control someone uh you can reanimate them uh you know it, that's kind of like saying oh well you know mutants wh wh why not just have one mutant have all the same powers it's like no it's cool because there's variations there's differences like you know you got storm you got cyclops you got rogue you got wolverine and whatever else beast yeah, but like, we already have jedi that are skilled at different aspects of force use um you know what i mean that are trained like and if they have a ability that people don't have you even have some rare abilities that are becoming less rare the more that ahsoka gets um but yeah. i i i feel like i feel like what Mueller's saying and what i kind of agree with is if like you already have this cosmic force that you have to deal with by introducing magic and now say well it's cool because you can just do anything it's like well you already I have something in this universe do... that's kind of built around i would say they complement each other because like you have the force that can do certain things but can't do the things that magic can do and then magic can do certain things that I feel like. Well, could magic do everything the force can do? See, that's the thing is we need to learn more about it. And I feel like it's just this ancient sort of sect somewhere in the galaxy that these like witches practice. I just find it so interesting that there's it's not just Jedi versus Sith that both use the freaking force. It's now the force versus like witches who use magic and can do something completely different. They can like reanimate a body. They can literally make you know some skinny Savage press into this jacked, force abled being. I mean, the force can't do that. They have to go around the galaxy scouring for force sensitives instead of uh, you know they'd be like, oh, you know what? You get the force. You get the well. You get magic. You get magic. But that's also the thing is like you don't have as a as a magic being. I feel like you don't, and they haven't explained it properly yet. But 
you don't have the same sort of intuition I feel like Jedi do or Sith do. So it's 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 super different in that sense. But yeah, yeah. the powers are I I just think it's freaking so cool if out. I pitch to you that in the next movie I'm going to introduce blood magic and the way it works is you can summon constructs like Green Lantern, but it'll cost you your blood. That's how it like drains you. Okay. And then I also, you know, next movie introduced demon magic where it's just about it'll take, you know, energy from you to summon demons. And they, there's all different selection, but they're an entity that acts on their own, but you can somewhat control them. Then I introduce another system that's about almost strictly high powered telekinesis, but the, the more you use it, the more you age. That's like that system. If I just had those three thrown into Star Wars, like those don't contradict anything that's come before. They're all from ancient civilizations that we discover at the distant edge of the galaxy, but now they're in and there's new people studying it. Like, is this good news to you? Because it's sort of new and creative and different and, you know, it can combat mm. the force in different ways. Or is it just like, what are we doing? Why are we like throwing this random shit into our IP? No, that's a little bit too much because you can already do all of that with the force and you don't get aged or anything like that. You can't make like constructs it's... with the force. No, but the uh, what was the, the third thing you said? You can um, telekinetic. Te telekinetic oh, so what powers. the telekinesis I was talking about is like, you know, way better than anything we've seen with the force and way more specific, controlled and easy, but that it'll age you. The whole point is that it has right. different costs and benefit systems. Right. Yeah. No, I, I think that would be maybe a little bit too much. But the fact that we have the force and then we have a sect of the light and the dark and then we have magic, I think three is perfect. Or really two. So to me, in this sci-fi fantasy world that was built called Star Wars, the magic is the force. Yeah, like mm -hmm. the force is the magic, for lack of a better term, in this universe, in this galaxy. And if there's something that you wanted to do um, in terms of like if it's like reanimating someone's body or whatever, I feel yeah. like it almost would make more sense if you feel like you fleshed out a lot of these things, you needed some something. It almost make more sense to have somebody discover some kind of ancient force technique that yeah. could be utilized to do something like reanimate a body that nobody knew about before. And that kind of makes more sense within that world rather than an entire new magic system that gets brought into play. I just like the fact that we have a whole other system in play. Like, we understand the Force pretty well. We know how it works. We don't understand how magic works. And so I'm, I'm fiending to, to find out how it All works. Right. I think it's exciting. Because there's just a total different element to it. I, I can't wait to see uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn and his army of witches. Zombies. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's the thing. It's like, you know, aren't there going to be some different abilities that they'll be able to exhibit? I mean, in the Clone Wars, Mother Talon. Well, Mahler, you haven't seen the Clone Wars, so you don't know exactly what can be done with magic. It's actually pretty freaking cool. Well, for lack of the wordplay, the most of what I do here is theory. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Okay, spam one if you like magic in Star Wars, like in the Clone Wars. Spam two if you don't like it. <laughs> All that from this one question. Uh, Mahler, <laughs> please continue One Punch Man Season 2. It brings in the Darth Vader of OPM and makes me love Genos more, plus more good character work with Saitama. If... um. Season three is on its way out. If everyone recommends three, like and say it's so worth it, then I'll be tempted to watch two and three. That'll probably be how it works. If three is really bad, then I'm probably going to stick with just one. So, by the way, I'm gay actor Michael Douglas. Uh, a gay actor known as gay actor Michael Douglas. I'm gay. Have you seen Wall Street or Falling Down? <laughs> <sighs> yes, I have. Both awesome, yeah. Wall Street's great. Is there an in-universe reason for why at-ats can be destroyed via blasters after falling over? That's one of the few nitpicks I can make for Empire. Oh, I always assumed that it's because their shields were down. I mean, uh, they're compromised, but like, I, I have a lot of criticism for the walkers in, in Hoth. Like, they're not, they're not great. They're in, iconic, undeniably, but like, they're not that effective compared mm -hmm. to what the Empire could have. Yeah, like, they could yeah. just fucking, they, they could do almost anything uh, yeah. other than very slowly walk them across <laughs> a giant fucking field. Yeah. Um, and no, I, I guess I really don't, other than you could justify that when they're when they're down like that, 
the one part that is vulnerable, which is the neck joint. That's the part that's not covered in the fucking like super crazy armor that that would be exposed. I, I believe that that would have to be your your argument for that. Um, but specifically when they're using the snow speeders, those aren't as powerful uh, uh, like lasers like from those blaster cannons as you would have attached to say an X-Wing. And that, mm -hmm. that at, at armor is able to pretty easily repel it. It's not a shield based thing, I don't think. Yeah, when I watched it as a kid, I was just like, okay, well, they're like shields are down probably now. So they're, they're sad now. Yeah. <laughs> so they can die. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like Canadian healthcare. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Uh, if y'all could pick one non Star Wars book into a movie, what would it be? One non Star Wars book? Uh, I don't know, man. Chrysalids would be cool. One non Star Wars book in a movie. You ever read Chrysalids? Mm -mm. I don't know what that is. It's pretty cool. It's an old book. We were asked this on Open Bar, and uh, Drinker said, like, a lot of the books that he would have chosen have been adapted at this point, and a lot of them have been badly adapted. So, yeah, that's the thing. Like, um, I recently did an entire re listen of the Percy Jackson series and the heroes of olympus series i yeah. fucking love those and they're doing a disney plus adaptation right the movies they did were fucking horrific but they're doing a disney plus series of it right now and there are some things that they do so much better and there are some just pointless meaningless stupid fucking things that they do in it um i really like that series i'd love to see an actual good adaptation i have not seen attack on titan Never could get into Dune. Might have to watch the new Dune. Hope you're all doing well. Hope the next episodes of Bad Batch are really good. So do I. Me too. Let's hope. Between the Bad Batch, DV by Pack, Mando, Ahsoka, etc., seemingly building to canon heir to the Empire. What if Luke's MIA and the Last Jedi is Luke? Just entertain the idea. Uh, that would be a great fix. That's not <laughs> happening. That's not happening. No. But in, in terms of it's not happening that they're going to retcon Luke Skywalker and Last Jedi to a clone of Luke. Uh, that's not happening. But yes, you, you are correct you that, they are steal, that they are stealing the principal ideas for a story that uh, has been read time and time and time again. One of the best selling Star Wars books we've ever seen in history. They are stealing the spirit of that story and inserting their own characters within it it's something i said that i thought they were going to be doing i think i said it in 2019 maybe 2020 just post rise of skywalker that this is the next thing they're going to steal that they're going to fucking pillage it's going to be heir to the empire and here we are four years later jibim was a very bloody conflict in the clone wars particularly for annie and obi in kenobi neither of them mention it when they're there I think Kenobi has a lot more things that they need to worry about. I'd frick Ryan like Salacious Crumb. Mary Theory like Padman. Kill Mauler like Maul. Love you all though. May the Force be with you. I love Star Griff. That sounds great. Hmm. Thanks, bro. Thank you. Thanks. It's funny to <laughs> it's funny to imagine Omega as a female version of Pim from Smiling Friends. It almost fits perfectly. <laughs> That's actually true. That's, that's uh, good shit. I recommend Smiling Freds for everybody who hasn't seen it. I agree with Ryan. Breast reduction should be illegal. I don't remember ever taking a public stance on that, but in most situations, I would say yes, outlaw it. Nice. Hello there, fan of y'all. Can y'all give this short video called TIE Fighter short film? Probably not, man. Take care. Tie fighter. I'll try to remember it. Uh, just please says gifted one star with your membership. Thanks, man. In the name of all holy, cancel Disney Plus. Here's my thing with the film. Some of the deleted scenes are super crucial, like Fenring and Thufir Hawat. Fenring's wife is the film, but he's not. What? Yeah. Dune. So, um, yeah. So he's talking about Dune oh. and some of the stuff. The obviously the Thufir stuff is pretty big in terms of importance and what happens and helping behind the scenes of these machinations working for the Harkonnens but still really advancing his own agenda to sow discord and everything um, and then yeah I agree it would have been nice to see Fenring as well 
the movie's three hours long and it's like i i don't have any problem with the pacing the first two apps the problem i have is the pacing's too fast in the third act that's how i felt about it mm -hmm. um, yeah it just rushed by for, for people that weren't maybe as in, uh, like engaged or uh didn't enjoy as much of it the first probably the first hour probably crawled by like for mauler i feel like the first hour probably crawled by for you oh, i was so happy to see the hawkins i was like yeah. yes let's finally see what they're up to austin butler was fantastic in that film by the way yeah he was awesome um the way it's done in the uh <laughs> the way it's done in the book is they're kind of both there on arrakis and the baron is kind of forcing raban he's encouraging to be iron fisted not to stop the like whatever's happening but to like make the population upset with him so they embrace fade ratha almost if that makes sense and we yeah. we missed out on we missed out on that in the it was kind of just a decision he made instead of having the people be almost the ones to want to make the change yeah yeah Book of Dave Filoni's biggest stan. Hello, Mauler. Excited for Phantom Menace re-release in theaters. Love the prequels, but I've only seen Disney Star Wars movies in theater, and I'm desperate for that to change. Also, check the new poster. It looks awesome. Ha! I saw them all in theaters, even though I was a young bun. Also in the book, Emperor doesn't look a day over 30. He's addicted to spice, so he ages slower. He sits on the Golden Lion throne, the epitome of decadence. We don't see that in the film. Yeah, for some reason, every live action adaptation he's been depicted as kind of like an old man. But in reality, because of the spice he consumes, he stays young. You guys going to go see the re release of Phantom Menace? Of course. Fuck yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to go to my Dune popcorn bucket. <laughs> Maybe I should save that for Attack of the Clones. Is that your favorite? Oh, that's the first one I probably got a boner in. Um, we were just talking about the bucket. Shout out Padme. The receiver's promo where Ryan pulls the saber out of an automatically correct model of Salacious B. Crumb. Can't wait for the Stargrift battle for two stream. Yeah, there's, we got a lot of promos planned for once the site launches in uh, two, three weeks. Hello there. What's your favorite bounty hunters? Oh, Django Fett for me. I mean, Star Wars is just going to be Django for me, yeah. yeah. Enjoying your weekly grift. Your mellow chat is relaxing. Mahler, would you, Mahler, would you recommend Knights of EFAP for theory to watch? I hesitate to recommend any EFAP-related memes and lore because it takes like 10 years to explain all of it if you haven't been watching all the episodes of which there are like fucking <laughs> like a year's worth to see at this point. So, you know, maybe. Um, they're very Star Warsy those uh, those videos, and they're amazingly made. You know but what? I've filled like... with references that you'd be like, "What the fuck is this?" I'd love to see you wear, you know, that the mask and just walk around and do vlog things. I'm real muffled. I have to get like a microphone built in. Yeah. Yeah, you just put one of those under the mask, or like by the neck area. Yeah, I guess so. Hello, Grifters. Have any of you seen the TIE Fighter short film? If so, I'm interested to know your thought on it. No, we haven't. We just got yeah, asked to, to watch perhaps, that. So perhaps one day. Put it on my list. Did you guys see the Glidus drama? You may want to talk to him, Mahler. Apparently, he collaborated with Alt-Shift-X, and now Swifty is jealous. Is the... Fuck, I forget my memes. That might be... I think, isn't Swifty Alt-Shift just alternate... Oh, well, that's that's, that's a completely different person. They have nothing in common <laughs> at all. Alt Swift X does not associate with, uh, of course, a, a nice like, you know, beloved personality like Alt Shift X. What's funny um, is I could never um, imagine. Usually, Glidus he just usually Glidus stays away from Swift and just Glimbus. There is someone named Glimbus. Oh, Glimbus, pals around Glimbus. Yeah. with Alt Swift X. And getting into shenanigans, but I don't think that Glidus would do anything like that. I feel like both of them would die in until House of the Dragon came out. They were like, "Yes, finally!" <laughs> and I'm here for it. I love the uh, both their channels. Just put out like a two-hour uh, real John Snow video. It's really mm -hmm. fucking good. The first 
hour is kind of like where he's at. Well, first hour and 20 minutes, like where he's at and also how different Jon Snow in the books is from even the early stages, Jon Snow of like Game of Thrones TV show. And then kind of after that, it's really speculation of what he thinks is going to happen. Wins a winner wise. Yeah, it's great. Um, by the way, I updated the links in the description for the boys' channels. If you guys want to go. Hey, Mahler, why don't you follow the words of the great cinema wins and just pretend it's what you wanted? Sure, that would mean you would like it. A classic. So, uh, we covered someone who basically said, about Rise of Skywalker, if you pretend it's what you want, then you, you might like it. So I looked up that TIE Fighter. Th this is the... Uh, people are telling me, right, the TIE Fighter... I have seen that before. It's like an anime style um, TIE fighter thing. It, it, this came out like forever ago. Um, I'll show mm -hmm. you real quick. We'll, we'll just do a couple parts of it so you can kind of see. But I really liked when this came out. I thought the animation was fucking cool as shit. This is eight years ago. 14 million views. Oh, this. Yeah, this is cool. Yeah, that's awesome. And they actually fucking start flying and shit. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> fucking sick guitar riffs in space. Oh, let's fucking fight. <laughs> It's yeah, cool, it's though. Sick, dude. Yeah, it's uh, really I can't imagine how much fucking work went into something like that. It's crazy. A lot. That was probably expensive, too. Oh, hey, chat. We really want to grow the show, and we can only do that with you. So we appreciate all the numbers here and people, and of course, the Super Chats. But we really, really need you to hit like. Without like, YouTube just doesn't really push us into the uh, front page. So, I mean, we have enough numbers, enough viewers. But if you could, every video, just hit like. I mean, it's so f easy. It's super free, and as you, you just well, super free. It's, it's more than free. It's, it's more free than, than free. free. <laughs> we'll pay you to do it. It's super free. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, yeah, it's all yeah, we need. Smash the like button. It's all it is. It's what YouTube sees, and they're like, "Oh, people like this. We're gonna put it on the front page, and then your channel grows." That's all that happens. It's literally how it works. It's that easy. That's right. Uh, da, 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 da. did you guys? Yep, so, so, did. So, so. Mm hmm Hamburger, cheeseburger, Big Mac, Whopper. Mm. All right. I give the last BB episode a four to ten. The episode is too much of a bad batch cookie cutter episode for me. I'm fully on board with Ryan and Mahler. With episode, need more episodes in a week. Needs pacing. I uh, it needs. They need to take advantage of the situations they have with all these characters. There's so much they're missing out on and skipping past. It could be so much more interesting, so much more conflict. We didn't even need the fucking worm. We had plenty no. to work with. You didn't need the worm, and you definitely don't need the fucking dog. Bat the fact that Batcher is going to be in <laughs> every fucking episode going forward that he's part hey, of the Batch You now. know that was like a mandate thing. Like, put a cute animal in there that'll make people like it more. Hmm. Hey, I didn't force you to do anything. You did it on your own accord and you got jaundice. <laughs> Empire and Two Towers are fortunate for being released before the rise of streaming critics. Dune 2 isn't better than most movies, but it's on par. Um, I wouldn't say it's on par with Empire or Two Towers. No, neither of them. And I don't know why people keep saying these things like, uh, see if they'd come out, you know, when you guys were like streaming your opinions directly, then you'd think of them less. It's like, what do you mean? We were doing that. We were talking to friends. When we see, see them, talk to family, whatever. Like, yeah. And then we watch them today and we talk about what's working and what we think doesn't. Yeah. A lot of people watch the OT. It's like, <laughs> we, we, you know, Lord of the Rings, like we recently uploaded stuff on the Moolah channel about covering it. Like, we don't just yeah. like pretend like we watch these things. Yeah. It, you guys like forget back in the day, it wasn't, you know, Twitter and shit didn't really exist. So, like for me, I don't know what the boys did, but you know, besides talking to your friends and stuff and close circles, 
<clears throat> um, I'd go on forums. I was on forums day yeah. and night, bro. Like I was like nonstop on different Star Wars forums. Um, forums FX and friends Sabres. and having those conversations about like, you know, who'd win Gandalf or fucking just for the sake of yeah, just stupid shit. or yeah. whoever else, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine was FX Sabers. I was on there literally day and night, and uh, it was just a great discussion. And it was like it was like hardcore Star Wars fans. It wasn't you know like what you get today, which is like. People that just watch the sequel trilogy and then think that they know everything about Star Wars, which I've, I've run into a million times, and it's quite annoying. But like actual diehard fans that have been following the the movies and the books and the comics and franchise for decades, and it was just a completely different time, really different time, and really um, core audience. Like I said, Dune, fantastic stuff, like filmmaking wise, right? I'm not going to say the script is fantastic because I don't understand enough of it to say. Like I wouldn't want to, especially um, from the adaptation point of view as well. I don't know how much it does well or does not or relies on the book versus the first movie, this, that, and the other, right? But what I am talking about is like, it does an excellent job in many facets of the creation of, of the film and loads of people love it. However, I don't believe it's going to have a cultural effect in the same vein as Empire or Two Towers. And I don't even think it'll be close. No, people, and th that's like a, and it's to be fair, it's like a small, significant minority of people that are trying to go out there and say that it's better than those things or that it's on par with those things. Yeah, uh, Super Chat may believe that as well, but um, yeah, yeah I don't get. That. I, I also think there's two ways to look at it. Like, I think it's perfectly acceptable without any knowledge of the sort. That's how that's supposed to be met, or that's how that should be the expectation that the random person buying a ticket for this hasn't read every bit of Dune shit, doesn't know all this stuff. They're just going to see a right. movie. So I think yeah. there's a certain grade for it that's that. But what is it as a movie? Totality as a movie versus yeah. what's the adaptation score of it? You know right. what I mean? How well did they actually adapt the source material? Because two things can be true. There, there can be a good, solid movie that is a fucking horrific adaptation. Right? It doesn't, um, doesn't a lot of people consider Batman Returns to be that? It's a really good movie, but it's not a good Batman adaptation? Probably. So anyway, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, there, there might be people that think that about a lot of different Batman properties we've seen, including yeah. like the Dark Knight trilogy, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's just kind of all on how you're looking at it and how you approach it. Mm -hmm. EFAP on the poorly aged documentary, The People vs. George Lucas. Still never seen um, it. I don't think I've seen that, no. No. Oh, really? No. Well, so I'm guessing it's about like shit on him for shitting prequels. On, yeah. yeah, yeah, shit on for prequels, yeah. Roundhouse kick of kick a of vong. vong, a yuzong vong. See, so that brings me back to the discussion with the force versus magic. So you got the force, Jedi and Sith, light and dark side, and then you got magic, which rivals both of those. So it's almost like light and dark have to come together to fight magic, perhaps. And then you have a, th a complete, well, we could call it like a third full, or like a fourth sect, which would be <laughs> they don't even use the force. And they completely nullify anyone who uses the force. So then it's like the force doesn't matter in that point, but then does magic is magic effective against the Yuzong Vong? Um, I don't know. So to explain to Mala, the Yuzong Vong are again, they're not using any different forms of you know, magic, whatever the force, whatever you want to say. They are beings that are actually like kind of they, they exist almost outside the force, like you can't sense them in the force, which goes against the whole all living beings right. or, or all living things, blah, blah, blah. Turns out there's a long story. They're from this fucking specific planet. Did a bunch of fucking bad shit. The force essentially got stripped from him. It's a long story. It's a 19 book series. But um, the Jedi find themselves like significantly, I, I don't want to say disadvantaged, but they don't have the typical advantage they have against almost everybody else that they can sense in the force. Um, and so it makes for an interesting uh, invasion of the galaxy by the Yuzong Vong. But again, I, I don't know what uh, I don't know what Night Sister magic, what this version of Night Sister magic would do against Until, yeah. uh, against that. But I don't think you need it. I think it's enough that the Jedi have a struggle that they are like, you know, that they have to deal with. A very difficult one. Yeah, it's like. We can't use all these fucking normal advantages we have. They nullify a lot of our inherent advantages over them, so they really had to change their tactics. How do you stay focused with Ryan constantly masturbating to salacious 
I already you answered know, that. Uh, okay. Helps me focus. Who's your favorite Old Republic Sith? Now Probably Darth, yeah. Darth Payne. Yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> you say Darth Payne? He's probably my favorite, but I'm not going to say like he's the best. You mean Darth Bane? No, pain. You say pain? Okay. Hey, Star Wars Theory, you <laughs> lost my meme on suffrage. X. <laughs> Regarding Jabba and his um, preferences. I'm a 20-year-old pro. I'm a 20-year pro in the design field, and I have a good sense of humor, and I've met you and Ryan. Let's do this. Mozamboni. He's the one who made the picture of me choking Jabba to death. Oh, yeah. After fucking salacious crumb. Well, I gotta see some more, man. I can't I need I need a little more uh to go off. Appreciate it, dude. Yeah, let me let me see a little more. Let me see some more. You know, try to do like try to do a thumbnail for this episode. Like a weird Dune one. Maybe me like I'm like bald and white. And uh, well, I guess white and uh Mahler or and, and Ryan as characters or something like in a in a Dune C. Maybe a Sam Wim. Yeah, make make Mahler a sandworm. And you got the sun shining, and and it needs to like, there needs to be a reflection of light, right? So it's like if if you know the sun is this way, and it's, it's light coming here, and and then hitting Ryan at a different angle, and it needs to look. Speaking good. of Old Republic, I really don't like. You already had um, like methods of using the dark side that do involve almost like, not spells necessarily, but like Sith sorcery shit that <laughs> Zana like got into. You know what I mean? Like you already have aspects of the force that work for something like that. Fuck the Night Sisters. They need to like be wiped out of the from the face of the fucking galaxy. Damn, um, I, I like. It was this energy I earlier. I, that was your. I you. Were, I was letting you have your discussion. <laughs> have any of you guys seen the video where the guy orders Dune bucket extra butter hold the popcorn? No. <laughs> Sounds like it's a setup though. Sounds like a good meme. I think so. No, he just goes up and he's like. He's like extra butter, and and then he's like hold the popcorn, and they're like, "What?" It's pretty funny. Please read my super chat. It's a suggestion for Mauler. I'm sure I did by now. Check out Tim the Tatman thumbnails. I'm not doing these FMKs. Weird. Hey, theory. I've used a crayon before. Can I Photoshop? Probably not. <laughs> What's your opinion on Dark Empire? Um, if you're if you're gonna bring Palpatine back, it's a better way to do it. I still don't, in general, like the idea of it. Um, that was a that was a George thing. Um, specifically when Tom Beach asked, because they actually wanted to bring somebody back that was wearing Darth Vader's armor that wasn't actually Darth Vader, and uh, uh George said no to that. But I I like a lot of elements of it. I like the idea of like Luke Skywalker um getting to face a basically full strength young palpatine overall it, i don't think it's a story that should have really existed but I, I like how forever it was like called the worst story in the eu and how dare people do this and that's literally what they fucking steal they fucking steal it for rise of skywalker and do it in a the worst way possible these days ryan should speak in his record impression for an entire star grift episode lol i'm good oh, that would guy. cost a lot of money i'm sure ryan would uh yeah, more than five dollars for that fucking four ninety nine. Split three ways, and then YouTube takes thirty percent, and then there's taxes. Yeah, so not much. Uh, why haven't there been EFAP Bowen T-shirts, Mahler? Bowen, and well, we're just terrible with EFAP merch. We're like literally fucking six years behind doing it, probably. Sequel trilogy re-roll. Let Ryan Johnson write, direct, remake sequel trilogy, or let Dave Filoni write, direct, and heir to the Empire. Um, I'm gonna say no to the first one. Uh, the second one, sure. Yeah, I'll say I'll eat a shotgun before I want to see any of those. Yeah, I'm good on all of those. <laughs> when is Dooku Saber out? Ah, Mr. Luca. I had a three over three hour meeting yesterday with the team, and I can assure you that you will be pleasantly surprised uh, at the end of the month when the full mm. saber shop is out. Extremely beautiful sight, unbelievable. Check out my current cover photo. 
Uh, I mean, you said it's seamless. It's just, that's <laughs> that's a gorgeous job. Yeah, I mean, seamless. Great, great job, man. What sort of lightsaber would Donald Trump have? The all biggest gold? and the best. Yeah, all, all gold. gold. Yeah, all gold. Be like Palpatine's. Well, yeah, Palpatine had Electrum on his, which is like what Mace Windu put on his lightsaber, and that was like supposed to be a uh, indicative of. Being hot shit, being like a Jedi Master. And so Palpatine used it just to like troll everyone. Like, fuck you, Jedi. Ryan's New Zealand accent sounds just as good, i.e. bad, as a New Zealander trying to sound American. Damn. Um, there you go. Wait till you hear my Obi-Wan uh, that I recorded last night in my new fan fiction coming. <laughs> it's horrendous. Horrendous. Uh, Ryan, top five favorite NJO Jedi. No Skywalkers for me. It's Kip Ganner, Calcutta, Corey, Tahiri. Top I have theory, but he's yeah. a fraud. Yeah, I guess so. Top five NJO Jedi. Well, I 100% agree with Kip and Kyle and Cornhorn. I would definitely put those in my top five as well. No Skywalker. So you mean no, like I can't use a solo, like in the Skywalker line, so I can't put in Jaina solo. Um... Let's see. I'd have to think about it. I will come back to it. Let me think about it for a little bit. Because uh, I love I love me Kip and Kyle Katarn and Cornhorn. Those are like my three, probably like my three favorite uh, NJO Jedi. We didn't get nearly enough out of Kip Duran. Debate ER and Atler instead of someone who hadn't watched the show in years. The fucking, I didn't. The, why are you guys still mad about this? I asked him to have a chat about it. and He said yes. I had no idea whether or not he was the Supposed to be rep the perfect representative of a debate person for Atla. It was a conversation. And then, as for Yah, I did talk to him about Atla. Um, he explained some of the flaws I had, but he made me aware of other ones. And it was, uh, it's just, yeah, it, it ended up being like not really changed my mind on the show at all. I was like, well, yep, that's about what I thought. And uh, that's fine. I just don't care about Atla anymore, guys. It's been, has it been like four years? <laughs> you got to move on. Really I got stuff to talk about. Who are they? It's a, it's just a show that everyone wanted me to watch because they thought I'd love it, and I watched it, and I thought it was meh. Avatar: The Last Airbender. Mm-hmm. Fat Steven Seagal. Well, Fat Steven JFG makes thumbnails. <laughs> Does he? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's why he said that. Somebody say thumbnails. Is he good? I, he's, yeah, he's pretty good. He better than better than me. I I don't know who he does thumbnails for right now, but I've seen he, I've seen him do thumbnails before. My thumbnails suck. Like, I just take real pictures and I fuck, and then I make one thing transparent with this fucking free website. It's not even a program. It's a free website that makes it look like shit. Probably. Um, I think you do just fine, Ryan. Thank Believe you. in yourself. I make a lot of them. <laughs> I've made fucking like four thumbnails today already. No, wait. I've made seven because of Sports Wars videos. You know, Bad Batch episodes six and seven. Oh, there's two tomorrow. Ooh. Thank God. Took you got your wish. Hey, Theory, have you watched Jared Genesis's review of The Last Jedi? No. <laughs> no. Of course, exactly. yeah. So you do not want to get involved with it any way, shape, or form. It's just a, a guy on YouTube. All right. Weird question, but do you know what someone who supports democracy is called? It's for a book. I mean, you could have a, all kinds of people could support democracy for different systems. I don't know if there's a specific name, unless you're trying to, uh, trying to say a Democrat would be co what you call a person who supports democracy. It's a little bit more complicated, right? Maybe a normal person. Democracy. The Republic. Call them a Jedi Knight. They fight for democracy. A clone trooper. Yeah. Um, in terms of other NJO Jedi, um, I'd probably say Saba. Saba Sabatine's fucking pretty badass. Um... I think you put Ganner in your thing. I like Ganner's last stand, but as a whole character. I think Ganner's cool, but I don't know if I put him in my top five. He didn't he didn't last long enough. Sorry, go ahead. Kenny Stevens. 
I buy a Naboo Street Clown Simulator game with Banks. That'd be cool. Uh huh. Uh, I like the novel Dune, but I cannot wait for y'all to react to Children of Dune of God Emperor of Dune down the line. So, it gets really fucking crazy. So, uh, the descendant, I think the second son of Paul Atreides, Leto the second, um, ends up being able to. <laughs> He turns into this like all powerful human sandworm hybrid and lives for like 3,500 years in, in like as a fucking tyrant over the galaxy. <laughs> so, yeah, it gets it gets a little off the rails. Uh, remember, Filoni is why we never got the Imperial Commando follow up. Keep the hate alive. I'm keeping it. <laughs> Oh my god, Mahler, please show them Jared's last chat review, that chick with the purple hair. Like, hee hee, what the hell, bro? I mean, it's funny as fuck, but like, I don't know if they'd want to see it. And besides, we kind of just want to leave Jared alone these days. He's, uh, you don't know what he's going to say next. James Moore for five. I almost forgot. Someone made an itch, itch IO, itch.io Omega Stargrift game. <laughs> I post on EFAT memes on Saturday. Yes, I played through to make sure it's safe. What is it? Like, is it, <laughs> what would that even be? <laughs> Omega Stargriff game? I hope that all the voice lines are uh, Ryan. I hope it's you. Oh, because of the fucking Stargrift. memes we had about, like, collecting holocrons and shit. Oh, the that game. Be, <laughs> that could be funny as fuck, actually. Yeah. Ahsoka IMDb score shows Ryan and Mahler are in the minority. Most fans enjoyed it. Um, yeah. Well, I'd also say most fans today, you know, you got a broader fan base, but it's uh, more diluted. If you think that... <laughs> if you think that an IMDb is an end-all, be-all, just remember that Dune Part 2, for a period of time, was the highest-ranked movie of all time. Above every single other thing on IMDb. It's fallen down like to a 9.0, so it's only one of the best movies of all time, which is, I like it. It's not on that level, so. Hey, he's got the same shirt as you. Hey, awesome. Maybe we're getting the book of Binks. That'd be cool. Daisy Ridley said she still hasn't got the script for the new movie. She said she expects the script imminently. This is why the sequels were so disjointed. I hope Bob Iger kills the movie. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, well, the they're at they're writing a script, <laughs> so like they're waiting for the script before they do anything. Yeah. Um, this is why the sequels were so disjointed. Why I don't really understand that super chat. Um, I think you should probably wait to go into production and do anything until you have the solid script in hand. Yeah, it so, seems like they're doing it right this time. Yeah, I don't know exactly what that means. Obviously, they fired the former guys. Um, and brought this guy on right before the writer strike. Writer strike went on. He had some shit to finish up for some actually successful thing that he works on. I forget what that is. Um, and they're expecting it to be like they've done drafts. They've turned in drafts and got stuff back. But they're, I think they're expecting a final script soon. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be any good. I think it's going to be shit. But I don't know why waiting until you have a good script would be a this is why the sequel sucked thing. Can we track numbers for 4K releases? I'd love to see Kenobi vs. Andor. Also, mm. any word on Skeleton Crew? I kind of think it won't come out this year. I think it will. That would be interesting to see if Kenobi or Andor get more 4K buys. My assumption would be Andor, but I guess I don't know for sure. Probably, dude. Uh, I believe, well, from what I saw from some Instagram pages, which really aren't, I don't know if they're not credible or anything. Not credible to the, the official thing. I'm not even credible to the official thing. They were saying that there's acolyte social media pages that are now popping up, official ones. I haven't been able to find any. So perhaps, you know, there's some trailer and marketing gonna gonna start soon. Yeah, supposedly June fifth or whatever uh Apparently, is like yeah. the reported. So Acolyte in June. I think that Skeleton Crew will come out in like November, December time frame. Mm-hmm. You saw well, did you see uh Brendan Wayne? In an interview, so the guy who plays Mando that's actually in it. Uh, no. So he said that he doesn't know what the, what's going to go on with Mando Season 4 or if there's going to be a Mando Season 4. Oh, that's unfortunate. He said they're prepping up to do the movie, but he has no idea about anything to do with the Season 4. Dang. Um, 
it's always been my guess that they are going to take what they had planned for season four and mash it into a movie. Um, but I don't. I know. would have liked for a season four and then the movie. Too bad. Too You're bad. getting a movie. Rest in peace, Toriyama. I found DB in my late teen years, but I fell in love and even have Majin Vegeta and Yard Rat Goku tats. Look up his Star Wars sketches if you have any love Star Wars and shows. Yeah, he sure did. He had a lot of um, callbacks in them to the comics and the manga that he made. Yeah. Hey guys, met Hayden and Rosario this past weekend. They were great. Uh, to theory, been watching since 2016. <laughs> awesome, dude. Thank you, man. Uh, by the way, for all join members, I've posted a sneak peek at Vader Episode 2. We finished one of the, the characters. It's the Wookiee. And uh, just showing you guys the progress that we've made. We'll also be posting some um, Vader stuff from the actual model itself that we've created. So one of the things that I really wanted to do with him, uh, you know, those two cinematics I made, they were just sort of tests to see like how it would look in cinematic, in CGI form. And what I wanted with Vader to be done was for it to be more, um, him to be more buff. So we actually got the correct proportions from Dave Prowse and it's now going to be like very on par with, um, with Vader as we know. So he's, he's like jacked and buff. It looks really good. I'll be posting those images for all join members. So if you want to become a join member, it's 99 cents, uh, go for it right now. And I'll be posting a lot as we uh, go forwards. We're paying for it every month, so. Um, the movie is well on well on its way. You three been enjoying the mechs on Helldivers 2? I played once. I haven't had much time to keep playing, but I'll be playing after this stream. So <clears throat> you guys will be teleported over there with uh, a stream raid. I had a bit of a character arc with him. I spawned it and was like, this looks fucking awesome. I got in and then I fired a rocket bad and killed myself. And I was like, oh, that was a bit disappointing. And then the next time I got in and like killed a bile titan with it and then I ran out of ammo completely and I was like, hmm. And then I thought, well, they probably shouldn't be able to do much more than that. That's probably good, actually. Like, they shouldn't be too overpowered or anything. I think they should be a little bit more... Since they increase the, the difficulty so much, they should, in, they should definitely make the mechs a little more powerful. <coughs> it's hard to bounce games uh, completely correctly. I've had, like, friends go nuts over some of the bounce changes they've made. I'm just sitting here like, yep, that's just how it goes. Yeah, they... it's pissing me off. They ruined it. Yeah. They really ruined it. Longman, please show these two EFAP highlight palps. No good, very bad day. Hilarious and shows what EFAP deals with. F. Mary Kill, Slave Leia, Genosis Padme, Dancer Mara Jade. Rest in peace, Toriyama. Um, yeah, I might do at some point if I remember which one that is. <laughs> I mean, like I said, EFAP memes are a treasure trove of insanity. Oh, that's a tough list. What's up, Darth Paws? Mueller is Luke holding open a black hole. 1.5 times Yoda lifting a tie. Also, I thought from the courtship of Leia, the Night Sisters were Force users. They are. Again, Night, Night Sisters, before Dave Filoni got his hands on them, were uh, Force users. Uh, holding open a black hole? What? So, that's not exactly. Um, all right, so what he's referring to is something that happens during a battle in New Jedi Order where um, the Yuzong Vong use biotechnology, right? So they have these, um, all, like all their shit, they grow their ships, they grow all the different like things that go in, that into them. they're basically like living things. Um, they even have to be like fed <laughs> and shit like that. But one of the things they use both, both to propel themselves and also for shielding are these things called Dovin basils, which are creatures that can, you know, like manipulate gravity. So it allows them to travel that way. And it allows them also to shield. They open up like almost like miniature, kind of like a black hole to suck in uh, incoming fire. And what Luke is able to do um, during this one battle is he's able to essentially kind of outline where the gravity is like he, he gets into like a meditative state almost and like super focuses and he's able to hold. He's not holding it open, but he's holding that hole that they're putting in place. He's trying to like keep the creature directed towards one spot when it's trying to move to a different spot to suck in an incoming fire and it won't move and it won't move and it won't move. And he makes it strain and strain and strain. And then he lets it go and helps push it. And it basically overshoots where it was supposed to go. 
and collapses the entire thing in on itself into the black hole. I think that's what he's talking about, holding open a black hole. Yeah. Um, he, he, but then right after that happens, Luke Skywalker passes out from the exertion. Um, uh, and then he dies. And then he dies. He doesn't die. But... Oh. He fade into the wind like a fart? He didn't fade in the wind like a fart, but no, after he does it, he, <laughs> he basically passes out. He like slumps over. Do you like how tears in the rain is a like you could say a fire in the wind and it would be you know you're achieving the same it just one sounds better than the other you know right and i guess do you know every time i think of the last jedi i just i i keep wondering if this is some sort of a dream, bad dream but it's not like it's it's not it's real it actually happened they actually did that fair enough sucks Mahler, thanks for reposting the clip in PT of your Force Awakens critique about logic and writing. I was the same guy who asked about it a while back. Yeah, I had a bunch of difficulty with copyright, but it's it got through it. Um, that video is still not monetizable, but I mean, it's available. And that's the important thing. Thanks, Henry. Would Andrew have been better if it was a movie? I would argue yes. Um better in what way like because i think the time they spend is needed so you know like, it probably would have been better received because people are more willing to sit through a movie than a tv show that's boring them i guess yeah i don't think that like, i don't think you could i suppose you could but I, I don't think it would have as much impact necessarily by the end Especially the, all the time you get to spend with the different characters if it was just a two-hour movie. Because how, how long was it? I mean, it was probably, it, what, 10 hours well, of content? It, you know, if, if you made it three movies, I guess you could do it. Well, you could cut out a lot of the crap that we didn't need. You're going to cite the serial scenes, aren't you? 100%. Those pissed me off so much. I was like, well, It's not eight there? hours of serial, though. <laughs> Freaking falling asleep. With his mom. Fuck. God. I mean, he started to pick up after the jail stuff. I was like, okay, cool. But geez, I mean, everything before that was just like... So you, what, you didn't think much of the heist? It was fine, but I mean, the, it literally... It took so long. So giving you all the characters before we did the big event with the characters, right? Yeah, I suppose so. Hey, I just want to see lightsabers and blasters go boom, 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 boom. There was some blasters. And no, like there is, that's, and, that's, and there that's are, what they say. And there are parts of it, especially with like Cyril, that it's it's meant to give you the feeling of the fucking monotonous drones who are like at that type of level in the Empire. You know, it's the stuff that focuses on him. Um, oh yeah, he's he's desperate to get out of that faction and into like the actual like policy, you know, pushing and significant difference making side of the empire because he believes in it yeah so he show us the downfall first because you know that's his first three episodes right he gets a blast of actually having authority and then fucks up completely yes fucking backfires yeah which i thought was really interesting that was one of the things that surprised me about andor the fact that i saw this empire drone rise up to like basic authority fail and look like ruined by it i was like shit his entire you know, life is wrecked yeah, I didn't think yeah. they would do that, you know? Like, it's it's been rare for Star Wars to give a shit about... You know, in the same vein that when you see TFA, you're like, oh, shit, I'm seeing a Stormtrooper react really badly to, like, battle? That's interesting. And then immediately oh, well. they tell you, oh, by the way, they're all programmed. So it's like, oh, shit, oh, you mean they can't no. have, like, control of what they're doing? That's kind of crazy. That puts Stormtroopers in a whole new perspective. That kind of humanizes them. Next yeah. opportunity we get, Finn just fucking blasting through <laughs> every stormtrooper he fucking sees, even like while he knows that they're programmed or they're brainwashed or whatever the fuck that yeah. even means. Yeah, I loved it. It was almost as good as when Bill Burr like humanizes the Imperials in that scene in Mandalorian 30 seconds before deciding, let me fucking kill them oh, all. No. For shame. Almost got there. Good to hear from you guys. Long time viewer, first time commenter, recently had a long and hard divorce with my ex-wife while she was unfaithful when I was away. Thanks so much for getting me out of my hardships. Uh, hey, sorry to hear that, man, but also happy to hear that because uh, you can find better. So, her loss, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry to hear that, Ice Phoenix. Yeah. Fuck that I'm glad shit. we're able to help you laugh through the day. Exactly. That's why I'm, that's why I'm here on this earth is to make people 
feel happier wow. when I make it, fun of other people. I, this is Ice Phoenix when he got married. I guess I was wrong. There was no danger at all. And that goes for a lot of us too, I suppose. But hey, now now you're out of it, man. And, uh, you know, the shroud of the dark side has passed. It's fallen and passed. And uh, happier days ahead of you. You're going to find someone amazing and I'm going to treat you well, dude. Go bury your face in some titties. <clears throat> what? The not good There's always a bigger fish. I was just smiling. Yeah. Now, now the force isn't the craziest shit in the Star Wars universe. Thank you. Just what we needed. Oh, does it mean like the magic system or whatever? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, the force is already like at risk, I would say, of becoming nonsense. So I probably mm -hmm. want to work on <laughs> sorting that out before risking another magic system anyway. Because I'm not against it fundamentally. I'm quite open with a lot of possible writing decisions, but I wouldn't recommend it, especially to writers of Dave Filoni's caliber. Ryan, head of HR. <laughs> I, yeah. I am. What do you mean? Uh, I've done yeah. some work in uh, uh, equal opportunity. Shit like that. What's that? Um, when I was in the military, uh, there's a uh, every fucking command needs to have a command managed equal opportunity officer who basically um, makes sure everybody gets their training and blah blah blah. Does these focus groups, shit like that. Luckily, in my command, uh, it was pretty small, but I ended up getting stuck with that collateral duty. So for two years, I was the equal opportunity manager. I made sure everybody was getting trainings about not being racist or sexist or fucking all that bullshit um, for my command. So yeah, I'm absolutely well prepared for a job in HR. Oh, Didn't have a single complaint my entire tenure there, by the way. So I must have been doing something right. Everyone thank Ryan for his service. Yeah. In the chat. Making the world someone's, a less sexist place. Someone says that's when he became racist. <laughs> this well, I, story. I remember after the... Uh, we literally had to do like an emergency... Uh, fucking bullshit was mandated by the federal government after the George Floyd riots um, of like a discussion about like BLM and everything. That was like the thing I hated more than anything else I'd ever done in the fucking military was setting those discussion groups up and everybody just did they didn't want to fucking talk about anything. They just wanted to breeze through it and check in the box and kind of what we did because we all just wanted to actually fucking work and no one gave a shit about all that stuff. Damn, John Theory says he didn't serve my country so F him. Well, you know what? He didn't serve mine either, but I can recognize that he's a <clears throat> man that served his country, and I think everyone won, everyone would do the same, you know, for their family or their country or whatever it might be. So um, I can appreciate that. So he's North American, so it's all the same shit. Yeah, I didn't I drop say. bombs on anybody, so. Yeah. I ran nuclear reactors. Well, maybe you did. That's why he's got jaundice. Maybe. I don't know what happened to me then. Uh, wait until Theory finds out a SBI employee disrespected Akira Toriyama after the news of his death. What's an SBI employee? Sweet Baby Sweet Inc. Inc. A what? Sweet Baby Inc. It's a games consulting company. It's focused on um, making games more inclusive and diverse for marginalized audiences Where, to enjoy. What did they say? It was just an employee who basic, basically said... Toriyama managed to make one of the best black characters and worst black characters in history. Something fuck like off, that. you fucking loser. Yeah, Go they got destroyed. Yourself. Go fuck yourself, you fucking loser. Is that on Twitter? It was. They were protected. So I don't know. <laughs> fucking joke. See, so I don't waste my time on Twitter, but if I did, I would have seen that shit. I would have loved to chime in. Fuck that guy. The thing that he got obliterated. Yeah, you got you got destroyed. <laughs> Good. The thing that confuses me about Night Sisters magic is that we already force rituals and such. So where does magic fit into this? Um. What do you mean force rituals? 
kind of talking about like what I was saying earlier, whether it's like cis sorcery or whether it's kind of these ancient, sometimes we, especially like old Republic era, they discover these kind of ancient things that can do whatever, whether it's in a SWOTOR game or a KOTOR game, right, where we might find it. Yeah, that's like, the why, thing is why, why the need for magic, which is completely separate from the force, like why the need for this different sect of magic in your game? Yeah, that's a really good question. I mean, you're asking the wrong guy. I'm waiting for them to come up with a, a proper explanation uh, for you know what magic is. I just think it's pretty interesting. I think it's compelling. I think there's a huge backstory behind it that could be rather um, lucrative for Disney and enjoyable for fans. What's Siri Tachi? Says Duchess Satine for Kenobi's love interest. Oh, Filoni should have never replaced the superior blonde or made the Mandos pacifists. I felt nothing when Satine was gone. Yeah, Siri is... Uh... He was introduced in the books uh, when Anakin was kind of a Padawan as a, a love interest that he had. Um, I think it's in the Jedi Apprentice novels. That obviously gets you know rewritten to be Duchess Satine instead. Mm. What do you think of the theory Old Republic Force users being more OP because they're at war all the time and the knowledge being lost because it was because of the wars? I think they were probably more experienced. I don't know about more powerful. Yeah, I think that that's always like we talk about that in our world, right? When people are trying to come up with explanations as to how maybe this thing got built during this time frame with that technology, if there's some ancient te ancient technology that was lost at some point in time because we wouldn't be able to recreate that now. So, like that's kind of the way I look at shit like that. How it's, certainly there could have been ways and things that were lost. Maybe the people that were in charge decided to bury it because it was too dangerous for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, I, I don't know if they actually, I don't think they were necessarily OP. They're certainly more battle tested in terms of their like battle skills, but in terms of just general force power, I don't know. What's the witch's M count? Zero. The force and magic are 100% the same thing in Star Wars. No. <laughs> no way. No way. You don't need to be force sensitive uh, to, you need to be force sensitive to use the force. Like, how does it work with magic? And that's the thing we don't know. They've kept it, kept it so mysterious. They've kept it so mysterious, Tick. I agree that magic is an awesome concept to explore in Star Wars, but I think it's tough to execute. Sadly, I think it's nonsensical with Disney's writing. It'll be nonsensical. Well, I hope not. George created it. You got to remember that. He created the whole magic thing. So, you know. See how they want to extrapolate on it. Magic was introduced in Clone Wars, correct? Yeah. Who else in the show will have the gay? Thrawn? Let's hope so. Luke better be effing up some witches. All right. Mahler, would you check out the 1980 Shogun miniseries? I like the new series, but so far the old one was much better in terms of fleshing out characters. And it has John Reese Davis as Rodriguez. Oh, that'd be cool. Rod um, Maybe at some point I got a lot of stuff I gotta check out all the time, you know. You know how it is. Yeah, I remember the 1981. I love Thrawn in Disney Star Wars. Imagine Hitler right after he swallowed the pill and presses the gun to his temple. He all good according to mine plan. Is that <laughs> He's saying that that's ba that's fucking basically Thrawn in Disney. Yeah, he's like, you know what? I'm sitting here, about to fucking kill myself, but it all went according to my own plan. Look at that. Yeah, I'm probably. successful. Probably how they're gonna write him. New Thrawn comic is trash. Hey boys, love you, Ryan. Hmm. Wow. Shocking. The comic. No, did you guys hear about the the what they're doing with the new Vader comic, dude? I, I missed that. There, one. There's a there's a new. Uh, I read the synopsis on some article. I got to actually read the comic. Basically, there's a suit that has the power of the Death Star. A suit of armor. So we've gone from the Death Star to um, Super Star Destroyers that can blow up planets to now suits. Power creep, boys. To suits. So I was like, why don't we just make you know a gun and you can point it. You're, let's say you're standing on Endor. You just point it at the Death Star and go pew. You blow it up. What that about doing that with sounds, the force? Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah. It's just stupid. 
here's the Anakin Padre picture I was talking about. Check out my picture. It's lovely. It's very well done. That's his face and his girlfriend's face. That's yeah. It's should frame that. What's up? What's up, Darth Locus? Are there any shows that you know are objectively bad and wouldn't recommend, but you personally really enjoy watching? For me, it's CW Flash and Probs the Clone. Uh, yeah, I would say 90210, Beverly Hills 90210, uh, the newer one with Matt Lanter. I actually really enjoy that show. I think it's it's super entertaining. There's a show called The Hundred um, that used oh, yeah. to air on CW. Yeah, I used to go to school with um, Ryan. Ryan Harmon. Oh, really? Okay. You guys yeah, know that I love show, watching Batwoman. That show is shit, but I watched the fuck out of it. Um, I don't know why. Even I knew it was really bad, but I just couldn't stop watching. Yeah, for me it was 90210. I watched it twice. <laughs> Great show. Love it. Nerd talk. What's nerd advice for all these nerds? Drink plenty of water. I agree with Maul and Ryan. I don't want to see magic in Star Wars. Well, then you go against what George Lucas wanted. Well, doesn't so, George go against what George wants sometimes? He, he quite often does. No, the, the he entire... always goes on what he wants. So you're willing, you're willing to say right now the entire existence of Ahsoka is contrary to what George wanted, so it should just be... It probably is, to excised. be honest. Probably is. Probably I mean, is. by like Dave Filoni's own admission, it is. Right? It probably is not what George wanted. Checked out the Saber site and they look sick, so I'm saving up for Annie 3. By the way, Theory, did you hear about Akira Toriyama? Yeah. I uh, was in a restaurant when Geekdom messaged me, and I... Uh, I, I literally paid my bill and I left and I um I, yeah it was that hit dude it was uh that was like George Lucas that's like George literally like George Lucas passing away from me um and uh I tried to do a video when I got home I recorded it like several times and I just kept fucking crying so I finally managed to do one and uh uploaded it to my Dragon Ball channel um it's like giving my sentiments and it was yeah it was tough I'm, I've been a huge Dragon Ball fan my whole life. I mean, I have literally inked the characters on my body for forever. <laughs> so, like, half of my upper body. So, I mean, I, it really does mean a lot to me. It was a very sudden passing. You know, he had so many plans still ahead of him, and he was only 68. It just, yeah. I mean, the guy, the guy, the guy did a lot for me and so many people. And it's, um, but that's part of life. And... You know, we're all going to go eventually. Yeah, all I can speak to is I've, I have not familiar with his work at all, but the outpouring like of love and support and everything was crazy. It's a massive community. It impacted a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, it really did. Uh, I've always been on the fence with the Night Sisters magic, but I always took it more as alchemy versus sorcery. Anyways, keep riding like a bantha. Like a like a benta. Yeah, that's always what I wondered too with Palpatine, how he uses force alchemy, Sith Sith alchemy. What's the deal with that? So maybe we'll know one day more in detail. So Disney is okay. saying they're impressed with the new Deadpool movie, but I personally feel they realize we don't care about unnecessarily female heroes. What does that have to do with Deadpool? Well, what do you expect? Oh, oh, because well, it's males. Well, like one, what do you expect them to say? It's like, yeah, we think this one's a pile of shit. Hope you guys watch it anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, like, I can't see them doing that. Like, fucking, you know, look how much promotion they gave The Flash. That movie was dead on arrival. And the companies were like, yeah, hey, hey, you know, yeah. Bro, Check Warner Brothers out. was pulling out all the stops, have all the celebs talk about how yeah. awesome it was. Did Tom Cruise recommended as well. Tom Cruise watched it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. It, it is... God, seeing Mike, they missed such a big opportunity with Michael Keaton, um, especially after the Oscars. I don't know if you guys saw that clip. I did. That clip was fucking great. Like, it's, no. it's such a stupid so clip. Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger up there presenting. 
and they started making Batman jokes and how how they got killed, how they got killed. And they, hey, there he is right there. And it's Michael Keaton sitting there at the Oscars and they're just giving him shit and he's just mean mugging him the entire time. And, and it's he like genuinely God. does a really good job of it. Like to the point where you're like, man, he ain't done yet. No, like, he's not. Is... Like, and the fact that what happened when the flash is crazy. Wait, we, we need a Batman Beyond series. Okay? Yeah, absolutely. He's we ready to go. He's right there. So long. Was this um, yesterday? Wait, was this a few days the ago? The Oscars, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it uh, is it on the tubes? You can um, find it on Twitter or uh, YouTube probably, but... Oh, God. It was such a little gift, because I love both of them as the villains. I'm just hearing them, like, you know, they're teaming up because of twins, and then they just start fucking referencing Batman. And uh, Arnie being like, yeah, that son of a bitch, kill him. <laughs> like, that, that son of a bitch, how dare you show your face? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking funny. Oh, shit, my one it weakness. Is. Here it is. Here it is. Love. Eat. Love. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Very nice. <laughs> well, Arnold and I are presenting tonight together for a very obvious reason. We both tried to kill Batman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're both tried. I, 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 as the penguin. Bro, Arnold still looks freaking great, man. Like, the guy's like 80 years old. It's oh, wild just... that D Danny DeVito is literally just Frank Reynolds. Like, when the funny. Funny. like they've been trying to figure out how, what to do with Arnie for the past few years, like what to make with him, because he's obviously not going to be able to do like hyper action stuff, but he's still clearly an entertainer. Dude, he was the one. <laughs> Penguin in Batman Returns. That was Mr. Freeze in Batman and Robin. Mm. <laughs> How did Batman beat you? Oh, he used uh, my one weakness against me. Heat? Love. Oh. <laughs> he threw me out a window. Uh, yeah, really? Yeah, he's really... Batman, the son of a bitch. bitch. Where is he? Son of a bitch. <laughs> He's here. I hate him. There he is. I hate He's him. He's right here. <laughs> He's right here. Look. You have a lot of nerve to show your face. Oh, yeah. You here. got, you know. Son of a bitch. You are a real <laughs> beef breaker. <laughs> I'm going to see you after the governor's ball. You better believe it. Pal. All right. And... <laughs> I fucking love the face Keaton's making. It's great. It's fucking great, dude. Man, like, uh, God, the old days. Were great. All he had to do is think about when he made that appearance in Morbius randomly. That was enough to make him have that face. Oh, yeah. He was in Morbius? <laughs> yes. <laughs> of course he was, dude. Okay. There's, there's like an article about that floating around. Maybe think yeah. about it. The, the, he's like nobody knew nobody could explain to me why i was there <laughs> <laughs> i can picture them filming he's like why is, isn't vulture part of this like dude just say the line yeah. <laughs> it's just this doesn't matter it's a fucking millhouse me well he wasn't vulture. batman no he was no, vulture he was from oh mcu yeah i have nine years lego leo background law enforcement oh. The white power hand sign is legit. A logo for white supremacy is also Woody the Woodpecker. <laughs> I, I always do that watching the show. I was like, you know, something, uh, right uh, 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 uh. <laughs> something ain't right. Spice is meth. Theory of Harkin. Those are the bald guys, the white yeah. albinos. Yeah, bald probably, guys. probably. I guess you hit the nail. Yeah, uh, man, these new Dune movies make the story dumber in general. All the intelligent parts from the book are cut out. What the actual f? It definitely streamlines streamlines some things. There's no doubt, but I think that's almost any type of adaptation of like that length of source material to that. The three of you get cursed by a witch to turn into Watto, Jabba, and Salacious B. Crumb. Who turns into who? Hmm. I think we all know who Ryan turns into. And Jabba's the longest, so I'll have him. What do you mean, who, who am I? Well, you are what you eat. <laughs> <laughs> to be clear, I'm not eating. 
salacious B crumbs. All right. I'm fucking him and then leaving him. I don't know, man. I don't. Uh, I don't discriminate. We ain't judging. I ain't sucking on that little monkey lizard dick. You said, all right? you said, it's never you gonna said, happen. Why you gotta suck? You got the other end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you said you are what you eat, so that implies I'm taking him in my mouth in some form or fashion. Maybe you're eating his... Whatever you want, Ryan. It's fine. You know? It's not about what I want. We're here to support you. It's about, we love I, you I actually no play by the what. rules of fuck, Mary kill instead of you guys. Just fucking... Theory just breezes over it when he sees when oh, I don't want to... Because anything I do, I get labeled as a misogynist. So I fucking breathe. I'm like a misogynist. You want to fuck, like, fuck Salacious B. He's like, no, they'll make me a misogynist. Like, yeah. fuck these people, man. It's so stupid. Fucking God. Yeah, I don't know what that's like. <laughs> uh, yeah. What? Anyways. You're starting to sound like a separatist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And you're sounding like a separatist. It's shock to the system. Spice is basically crack in Dune. It's Lord Snow. He is the prince that was promised. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe he's Lightbringer, and maybe Rhaegar's the prince who was promised. The reason is Swift is Shift's bastard. My God. What? Driving Ahead says, I absolutely adore Dune Part 2, having read the first five books of the saga. Dune definitely isn't everyone's cup of tea, but uh, as it is more a cynical and less he heroic story. Yeah, and I, I like that. I mean, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's the reason why something like this can never be as big as like Star Wars, like cultural impact like that. Um, in my mind, I just don't think it's as yeah. accessible or as relatable. Trek Anderson says they've changed Thrawn so much from his Legends counterpart. How do y'all expect him to be handled, used, and defeated in the new Disney canon? Also, love the podcast. Tell me your favorite Imperial, Pelion. Um, favorite Imperial. I, dude, I like Tarkin. Pelion is awesome. Admiral Galad Pelion, uh, yeah. Supreme Commander of the Galactic Alliance Combined Forces. Uh, he he he's fucking awesome in the books. Um, Admiral Dalla. She's all right. Um, As yeah, for Admiral Tassi, Thrawn, if they don't hire a fucking ghostwriter, then you're going to see him do more stupid shit that's supposed to be intelligent shit, and then him coping. Until he does something, probably they'll give him something effective. They'll give him a win eventually, like Floney Well, because that's how you do stories, right? You're going to make him either kill someone significant or at least partially significant or blow something up that's important, and then he'll be defeated. And he'll probably, like, all of it will be done in ways that are just like, wait, what? Why? So... You, you know, expect you know, that. You don't know what my guess is. My guess is that he's going to um, the planet. They're going to be able to do a bunch of Sith sorcery and resurrect a bunch of fucking bodies. He's going to have a massive fucking army, going to be able to fill a bunch of ships, shit like this. And then the New Republic is not going to take it seriously, even though Ezra came back and says this shit. And that, uh, what's her face? Uh, fat ass Hera. Um, and that Hera is going to be like really frustrated because none of the men want to listen to her and she's not being taken seriously and they're going to send like a little force against somebody. What? How is she fat? No. Fat she, ass. Got a, she got a fat ass. Oh, fat ass. I, yeah, yeah. I was saying that in a good hey, way. I was saying I that in a good way. Yeah. Right? I don't, uh, yeah, I don't do, I don't. Yeah. I was saying that as a way to like, try to remember fat ass. Oh, Hera. Not like Lizzo. <laughs> but Yeah. Well, I'm hoping Lizzo comes back. It would be kind of neat, I think, if she could appear. Maybe they summon her with the, the, the magic. Maybe Kathleen Kennedy should intervene and, you know, you know, stop John Favreau from bringing Lizzo back. Ryan, genuinely, though, if they used the, the evil magic and they summoned a Lizzo with two Darth Maul lightsabers and she spun around so fast it created a tornado. She created a, a the, tornado and then yeah. they put a bunch of force lightning into it. And oh, then, that'd be so cool. And then it sucked up three oh, Death Stars out of a black hole. You know, like in a video game where you hurt the boss enough that it fucks off and then sends a bunch of small things after you? She does that. <laughs> and then, like, when she comes back into the boss arena, she eats a few of them to gain more health. And it's like, ah, oh, fuck. You know, like, like the, the whole second phase of the fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in between, yeah. while she's eating those little things, there could be a discussion between Ahsoka and Luke and Sabine. 
while Ezra makes jokes. <laughs> yeah, like they 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 mention Anakin and how he's cool once, and that's it, and that's all you get for Anakin. And it's just well, like, that's wow. unfortunate. Yeah, because they got their priorities straight, right? That's what they always do. And then he makes an appear. He appears in Force Ghost form to say something really important to Ahsoka, the thing she needs to like take down Thrawn, and then he like drifts off, and Luke would be like, "Who are you talking to?" She's like, "Don't worry about it," and uh, no one important. Yeah, and then <laughs> she's the hero. <laughs> like Anakin's talking to her, Luke's heading into the room, and Anakin goes, "Oh shit!" <laughs> Runs off. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit! I'm scared of confronting you again. Um, so I wasn't there for you, son. But yeah, I think we really just did the outline for Filoni. We did his work yeah. for him for season. Yeah, what there we just go. outlined was not only Ahsoka season two, not only Mandalorian season four, but also Mandalorian and Grogu. I'm pretty sure that's the whole set. Jack Black will probably do a song as well for the boss fight. Yeah. Jack Black's Britney Spears, song. Britney Spears cover was great, actually. It was. It was fucking awesome. That's like my favorite Jack Black. Did you hear what I called him? they put him in Star Wars and made him lame. Did you hear what I called him on FNT? What'd you call I him? Said, I said, those guys are kind of... They, they got to take a little bit better care of themselves because right now they look like tenacious diabetes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, I don't want to be mean or anything, but like genuinely, I want them to be around for much longer. But yeah, they're getting old. They're pretty overweight. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I don't know how Lizzo. Jack Black can move the way he can with as fucking fat as he is. Dude. Did you ever see Stop him on Community? any chance no i never watched that show he has like a guest uh, episode but he's a, like a character he's not jack black and he explains in that that he wants to join the main group because he's the fat guy who's like suspiciously energetic <laughs> like, that's his like character right. yeah. <laughs> usually turns out to be cocaine or something yeah. steph's abuse keyword theory or pathetic as always thank you Appreciate that. <laughs> may i ask why or how or how did you come to this conclusion um, if you like, we would extend the invitation for you to come on the show right now and explain. No cap. For real. Let me know. For real, for real. Yeah, let me know. I think when they fall over, the neck joint is exposed. Okay, but Ryan, why do you explode? Do the Empire keep bombs in the neck? It's possible. You, you could justify some sort of fucking fuel or, or whatever. Be, like, something being ignited with that that makes it explode, but... Mm. Yeah, and if I'm I'm doing my best to explain away what I think it is. Mm -hmm. The Bad Batch would be much better as a game sequel to Republic Commando. It's flat blasphemy. We haven't gotten a KOTOR 3 and a third-person Mando bounty hunter game. Should have been in production as soon as the first season ended. Eh, I fully agree. Well, I don't think they know what they're doing. It feels weird comparing Dune to Star Wars and Lord of the Rings. Dune is the anti-hero's journey, completely opposite to what Lord of the Rings and Star Wars is doing. Agreed. Well, is it really? I mean, is you could say it's really weird to compare Star Wars to Lord of the Rings, right? But you still do. We still do, like, compare all kinds of things. If someone said, like, Blade Runner versus fucking, you know, Die Hard, I'd be like, uh, why? But I guess we can if you want to. You know, like... You can compare everything, kind of, but also you shouldn't. <laughs> like there are par obviously there are you know George Drew specific inspiration from things in Dune, obviously, famously, um, mm -hmm. and there are similarities between like the idea of Paul's story, the idea of Anakin's story, but there's also like vast differences. Like Paul Atreides is somebody who is like so somebody who was born with all these different things all these fucking advantages not just like the the Bene Gesuit shit that happened with him but also the fact that he had a father like Leto the fact that he had people like Duncan people like Gurney in his life to teach him all these fucking different things um and like he is this prophet he's this prophesized fucking person but he is refusing to take those steps because he knows the harm that could be done if it happens and finally, due to circumstance, he's forced to kind of embrace that and do it the best way he can without, you know, and, and kill the fewest millions of people that he possibly can by leading a holy war across the galaxy. It's a very reluctant story. He's try it's a it's someone who knows he's prophesized to be space Hitler and is trying not to be. So it's Oh, someone says put him on stream, he's willing. Where? Where is he? I'm down for them entertainment. 
Uh, Night King, more about Dune. For me, Fenring is one of the most important parts because he's a failed quiz like Hadarak, and he makes a decision to step aside when he could kill Paul and lets him reach the Emperor. I, I agree. Um, it would have been awesome to see. It would have been <laughs> awesome to see him in it. Okay, comment. I don't know nothing about Dune. Thoughts on anime Attack on Titan now doing Star Wars Marvel at capturing complex human emotion? Vivid world building, contentious politics, and compelling storytelling. Hi from Liverpool, Mahler. Hello. Yeah, I think the problem, or rather the um, the difference between anime and uh, Hollywood is that anime focuses on story, whereas Hollywood focuses on a checklist. And they don't really focus on story. They just, I think they have a bunch of boardroom executives kind of like thinking or, or, or writing down what they think would make a lot of money and then uh, completely disregard anything that would actually propel the story that they've uh, perhaps purchased, you know, Marvel or Star Wars or whatever. And that's kind of the problem is that you see this massive discrepancy between what once was the original stuff and then now it's like this Disney-fied or Hollywood version of, of whatever they're trying to create. Diluted. Weird shit. Do you use Dark Side at the gym? No, I just work out. Uh, isn't a good ad adaptation making a good movie and not being one to one with the book if it doesn't translate well to the screen, such as Alia? Never seen Alia. Um, I'm actually interested in that whole conversation about adaptation because I do think that sometimes it's, you know, like if you're adapting a bad piece of content, like a shitty book, it's like, should you just do everything the shitty book does or should you try and improve it? when you translate it over there's like there's a lot of different hypotheticals you could do for exploring the nature of adapt adapting but if someone adopts the nature of the more faithful the better the adaptation then you can go by that as a scale and you know judge it that way if you want to mm -hmm. so what he's specifically talking about Aaliyah is Aaliyah is Paul's sister in Dune part two the one who's not born there are big differences in Dune part two because there's a time compression but in perspective in the book there's a two-year time gap that takes place while they're in the desert where Jessica has her baby, Aaliyah Atreides. Um, Shawnee has a baby with Paul already um, that we don't get to see in this because obviously Lady Jessica hasn't even, it hasn't even been nine months, obviously, because Jessica's still pregnant by the time Dune Part 2 is over. Um, but the appearance in that dream or in that vision to Paul of an adult Aaliyah, that's like, that, that was like very off-putting to a lot of fans of the books. Um, so I think that's kind of what he's talking about. And ag again, it's really hard to kind of explain. It it's even hard to explain to people what's going on with Aaliyah here um, in Dune Part 2 based off what happened in the books. That's kind of what he's talking about, the adaptation thing with her. But there's just some things that don't translate well on screen. So you gotta, you have to find a way to make those changes in the best way possible while keeping true to the spirit of whatever, whatever it is you're adapting. And to me, that's why Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings is so incredibly beloved because yes, we know historically the things that people complain about that were the differences between that and the actual source material, but there's not many people that, that are going to argue with you that the heart, that the spirit of the journey of these characters and that story of what Tolkien wanted to put out there in the world, that that is put on screen. And I think that's why it's so beloved. I remember as a kid seeing in our library a book of a Wookiee holding a red lightsaber. You know anything about it? And should I read it? Hmm. Never saw this. A Wookiee holding a red lightsaber. I think Lobaka's lightsaber is yellow. Uh... uh... I don't know about a Wookiee with a red lightsaber. So I can't tell you. But yeah, go read it. One magic system to rule them all. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you guys see all of Better Call Saul? I have not. A six season spinoff as a side character from BB. That show is so much better than it has any right to be. It's nuts. Yeah, it's an easy recommendation. If you haven't seen it and you like Breaking Bad, go watch Better Call Saul. Love I haven't Bad. watched the final season yet, but the most of it's freaking oh, it's done awesome. Now. Yeah. Mahler, please consider Chris S. Rogue One Phantom Menacing video on EFAP. To all, were you satisfied with Anakin's turn? Hard for me to see OT Vader. Yeah, I was satisfied. No. 
you weren't satisfied. I have plenty of issues with the prequels, Ryan, and one of them is definitely Anakin's turn. It's uh, not very satisfying for someone who's a hyper fan of the OT. I was expecting a little bit more work to be done, better dialogue, better reasoning. Um, I take issue with a couple of the significant events, but I still respect what they were trying to do. Okay. Should we get into it? Because it's going to be a long discussion, or should we Fuck, do it next week? Next time, maybe. <laughs> next, that, that's yeah. a discussion for next time. I, I wish we would have had four hours of Rise of Skywalker, or Revenge of the Sith. Um, <laughs> God, not Rise of Skywalker. But I wish we would have four hours of that, because that would have been awesome. <laughs> yeah, put a slip up. I'm reading through the Fate of the Jedi series, and I'm amazed of how popular freezing people in carbonite is i got the impression it wasn't a common practice when vader froze on not super common in the way they did it but there's certainly been well one since that time and people realized it could be done there was a lot of people that did it but even before that there were people that were using carbonite to to do it i think more so they were worried because that was not meant to do that that was a uh they basically had to change the settings of where, where we were on uh, on Bespin to get it to work that way. So they weren't sure if it was going to work. But it, ha it had been done previously and continues Dark after. Empire still doesn't exist in my head canon after all these years. Finally able to catch one of these shows live. Hi from Australia. Hey. Howdy. <laughs> <laughs> that booty. <laughs> Twitter, Kyle Katarn ruined Katarn for me. Dude's a tool. Eh, he's just having a good time, I suppose. I don't know. Uh, question for theory relating to the Night Sisters: Where do you think Marin's character could go in the third Jedi game? Cal and Marin as individual characters are the most interesting to me in Disney's shit. So not a high bar. Um. See, this is where I think it gets interesting because now that Dathomir's back, I think Marin's going to probably side with her family and then Cal's going to have a problem with her and she's going to go back to being somewhat of a uh, antagonist perhaps. So it could get interesting. You guys really want Hocus Pocus in Star Wars? Yeah, bro, <laughs> like George Lucas put magic in Star Wars with the Night Sisters. I you think could it's do cool. me. You can do magic really well, really maturely. Hocus Pocus is a funny thing. <laughs> <laughs> Watching the stream while downloading Helldivers 2 patch. Much love, boys. What video games are you currently playing and enjoying? Question for all three of you. I'm enjoying Helldivers 2. Helldivers, yeah. And soon to be Battlefront 2, I assume. If gender isn't real, either is the gender pay gap. I'm cancelled. What's up, Muin? The Dark. The end of Dune 2 was attack on of the clones ending. If Talzin knew her son was alive this whole time, why didn't she save him? Also, she can give anyone the force that can rival Dooku. Nah, she can't give anyone the force that could rival Dooku. No way. You gotta be special. Great show, y'all. I mean, Talzin was the only one that could rival Sidious. And she's like one person. Great show, y'all. Thank you, Theory, for putting it together. More to shell. Have you told Theory about the 10-hour prequel debate with Sam <laughs> from the Sam and Ant-Man show? Ryan, cheers. Is, that, is this another one of your names? No, this is because you. I think you said instead of Adam, Sitch and Adam, you said Sam and Sitch or something. It was just a mystery that was funny. But <laughs> the, yeah, they were on to uh, discuss the Phantom Menace. We were supposed to be mediating that one, me and Rags, but uh, they spent like two hours discussing the motivation of the trade federation to embargo like nabu we didn't get off that for like two hours literally the fucking opening credits just the the crawl i mean you know like it, it was it was a it was a whole it was a ride i think honestly by mentioning it there are going to be efap fans in the audience are going to have some ptsd um yeah and thanks to these guys for doing the show with me man no problem for anyone that takes critic websites seriously, Metacritic scores Joker 59, Cuties 67. I hope these people are on some kind of list. I just never take aggregate sites too seriously as ind indicative of necessarily anything. They're interested to see what they look like, but it doesn't give you much to work with. No. I don't ever really take that into consideration. 
It's not the end all be all, right? Like it's interesting when sometimes you see a movie come out and like it has like a 95% audience score and like a 20 critic score and you're like, well, that's weird. Why is that the case? Sometimes it's because that movie is actually really fucking cool and the critics hate it for some random reason. Or sometimes the movie is just fucking shit and has a very small audience that actually watched it. Therefore, was able to actually give it a good score. Like the very small people that liked it or were interested in it watched it. But other than that, had no appeal. Nobody wanted to see it. You see that shit all the time. So you have to yeah. kind of factor all of that in when you're looking at uh, scores on IMDb or Rotten Tomatoes or whatever. Yeah. Anybody playing Star Wars Unlimited TCG? I'm surprisingly satisfied with the gameplay and thematic deck building potential. Uh, no, no, never played it. Sounds like a mobile card game. Would you guys like to see a Dennis Villen Villeneuve trilogy in Star Wars? Maybe Bane or Old Republic? I think that'd be cool. Yeah. Why not? Why not? He does good movies, so... I I don't think he um, has the desire to come into any other established cinematic universe. I think he said after Blade Runner, he's never doing that again. Do you mean after Dune? No, after Blade Runner. Because obviously, so like, why do you do Dune? <laughs> well, so there's been a couple attempted adaptations before of Dune, like '84 or whatever. But in terms of like, he got to create this version of Dune. You know what I mean? Like his ver his version of Dune, adapting the book, as opposed to oh, like coming in new... after part one and doing part two. You, do you know what I mean? Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, Star Wars is already a cinematic connected universe. He he wouldn't want to do so. He wouldn't mind doing that. Star Wars if it were like Elseworlds, so to speak, his own thing. Like he doesn't have to adhere to anything. Potentially, hmm. um, yeah, because he was talking specifically about Blade Runner twenty forty nine or whatever when he made that comment. Love all the EU book talk, Ryan. I grew up going to my local library and reading all the Star Wars books I could get my hands on. Thoughts on Dark Saber, the book? Also started reading NJO, about to hit the Battle of Ithor. Hell yes. Dark Saber is not a great book. Um, it, it has the problem that some other EU books have in terms of constantly chasing the super weapon shit. That, that was a common struggle with a couple books that were written in the 90s. Was they're always trying to come up with another super weapon. Specifically, the dark saber is a weapon that gets created that is simply like you don't have the rest of the Death Star, but it's basically the fucking firing cylinder of the Death Star. So you have the weapon, but it's more mobile. You don't have to commit as much money to building something around it. It, it was kind of a silly concept, but not a big fan of the book. Mahler, you talk about Mando's relationship with Frogu being too fast. How would you extend their progression as a duo to work better? So it depends on what we're dealing with, right? If I get to rewrite the whole thing, I, would, I wouldn't make baby Yoda as young as he is. I would age him up so that he can actually like not only talk with Mando, but also have formative growth, like change over the course of several seasons in terms of the approach and inspire Mando in some ways and vice versa, right? If they're talking about like the relationship with Grogu being too fast i'm not sure what they mean by that because like as far as i'm concerned like the relationship is relatively static other than just like he begins to care more and more seemingly but i don't see like his care for baby yoda at the you know end of the first episode is probably enough that he would have done most of what he does throughout all the seasons like uh in favor of the kids so um how would you extend their progression as a duo to work better it's like you can't do a lot with them as they stand because baby yoda is incapable of like strong communication other than the time he was inside a fucking IG unit saying yes and no, which was kind of strange because that was like the most clarity we ever got on his opinions other than Ahsoka translating for him. It's all very strange and it feels like their whole approach is they want their cake and eating it too of a baby, like an infant waddling around doing silly things and funny things, but also that he has an opinion and an influence on the storyline. You need to commit. You need to figure out what you want to do with that. So to make it work better, we just got to, I would rewrite it from the ground up and make it so that those two have a huge impact on each other's lives. It's more substantive than Mando being like, you know, I used to be a bounty hunter, but now I'm like a dad. Thank you, Mahler. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> I think they should just kill him. <laughs> I knew that was your perspective. They just need to time jump. Thank you, Ryan, for your service. My little brother is a Marine. Oh, shout out. Thank you for your service, Ryan. Do you have a favorite war film? Um, you know, I was actually just thinking about watching Saving Private Ryan again. 
Um, so I don't know if that's my favorite, but that's one I fucking love. So, well, are you going to cover Harry Potter HBO series on EFAT? Don't have much passion for Harry Potter, but we might do the films at some point because they're interesting to talk about just as you know, things in general. Uh, as for the Harry Potter HBO series, doubt it, maybe. Do you have any plans in in over two years when it actually comes out to cover it on EFAT? Well, you could make fun of him for that, but at the same time, you know, am I going to cover the Ray movie if it ever comes out? It's like, yes, like obviously. Uh, They're probably just curious if I care about Harry Potter, which the answer is no, I'm afraid. You have that accent you're supposed to. No. I can't wait for that fucking series. Oh. Night Sister, that's going to be great for uh, Silas on Harry Potter theory. Night Sister uh, Magic. But trust me, there's going to be another fucking Batman video of me, depending on some of these cast uh, cast decisions they make. <laughs> Probably. Night Sister Magic is derived from the dark side of the Force. It's part of it. And how George built it was to be a subspec, if you will, of the dark side that is infused with Ikor's magic. Mm. Okay, what's Ikor's magic? Like a little potion. Okay. The blood of a giant. I don't know if it's derived from the dark side of the force. Like I kind of feel like it's maybe its own thing. It feels pretty darky we'll to we'll me. We'll see. Of course. It's witchy. You need to make a fanfic of Fat Mace the Cholesterol. <laughs> did Maul see Annie Arnie Mr. Freeze bit at the yeah. Oh, did great show more of this please absolutely yeah no, I'll, I'll be doing the show as long as the boys want to keep going yes magic is just another word for force every magic user is a force sensitive night sister this existed in both legends and disney canon what i don't think so again in terms of legends like yeah again those night sisters they were just using an aspect of the force like that's what they were doing well in the witches of dathomir period we're using the force love the work boys continuing from last week is it important that i read over the trilogies before fate of the jedi luke versus abeloth or is it still all good if i jumped into fate of the jedi much love um I think it's, uh, I think you're going to be confused as fuck if you just read Fate of the Jedi, but it's up to you. There, there's a lot of shit you'd have to read, though. So, um, what would you have him start with? I'd have him start Luke with Luke vs. Abeloth. I'd have him start with the Thrawn trilogy. Um, and then I would have him do at least, at a bare minimum, the hardcover books in New Jedi Order, uh, which is like probably five books. That would be like a summation of New Jedi Order without reading all 19. And then I'd read Legacy of the Force, which is a nine book series. Kind of got to read all that. And then I do Fate of the Jedi. What was the summation of New Jedi Order? So the New Jedi Order books, the ones that were published in hardcover. So mm-hmm. like Vector Prime, Balance Point, Star by Star, Destiny's Way. Um, and I forget what the last one's called, but there's like five or six books that were published just in hardcover that if you just read those, you would get a kind of cliff points under or cliff marks version understanding of what, what went on without having to read 19. So the hardcover ones. Yeah. I haven't read an NJO. Uh, I just want to say love the show and hope the best to you all. Tag you in some custom pics on Twitter. Username. Okay, hey, let me let me see this. Uh we got going on here. Mahler, you often have have shit and criticize things that people love. What are some examples of things you defended strongly that's often hated? Hmm. Last of Us TV show. Um, I defended that's... God of Ragnarok quite heavily. <laughs> the the Last of Us TV show is hated. More so for everything that happened in the Last of Us franchise than the actual product it, itself. I aside didn't watch from, it simply aside for that from reason. episode three. Um, I didn't watch it simply for that reason. Yeah, I mean, this is my opinion. But. No, I don't. I don't think I disagree with you that much. Like the a lot of people who hate it didn't finish it, right? They were like, "I can't fucking 
watch this crap sort of thing. When some of the best episodes, as far as we were concerned, were some of the last ones. They did really well with, as far as we were concerned, adapting. Um, we got loads of videos covering it, and we try to address as many arguments as we can. That's probably an example of something that was pretty heavily criticized in here that we defended. Um, I'm trying to think of other examples. There's plenty. Ryan, what do you remember my controversial takes being? Yours? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you, if you have too many controversial takes. Obviously, I had to do a lot of defending for Andor. Uh, a lot of people didn't like that. Yeah, um, that, that might be something. You've defended that strongly. That's openly like a lot of people push back against that. But Oh, yeah. I mean, a lot of the streams I've been on, uh, the running sort of attitude is that Andor was boring as fuck and just kind of like uneventful. But um, do you, you, know, really, I, I, you really like Joss Whedon's Justice League or you just don't? don't no, think no, 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 no. I don't. Okay. I said in the video, it's it's bad. It's just better than the Snyder Cut. OK, well, I, I was think... out because I didn't know exactly if you really like that or if you just preferred it to. to but that you, Cut it's good that you bring it up, though, because technically that would count. Like I defended yeah. Justice League more than anyone else probably did. Yeah, the uh, the, re the reshoot scenes in that actually try to account for wonder woman's history and batman's role in the justice league i i have it all in the video where i was just like this is actually like not terrible um snyder cut is fucking terrible <laughs> anyway there you go i'd love to hear your guys theories for shin and balin i think one of them gets killed possessed possessed by abeloth and that's the big villain for season two shin could even be mara jade by mara jade balin Sabioth. Well, Shin could get possessed. I could see that. Uh, I don't think they have plans to put Mary Jade in there. I fucking hope not. I hope Avalov's not a part of it. I hope Mara Jade isn't a part of it. Make up your own shit, you fucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the perfect super chat to pop up right at that moment. Sabine force pushes Lizzo into light speed rift uh, right through Thrawn's fleet and the galaxy is once again at peace. Do it. Much love, boys. It looks like both my previous super chats got missed. Uh, no, we, we're just probably an hour behind. Have any of you watched Dark on Netflix? A German show, but very different take on time travel and parallel universes. I have not. I saw a decent chunk of it. It was very good, but I got lost in it. It got a lot too complicated for me to understand. There's a lot of timelines that end up happening. I had trouble following it. I should rewatch it someday. Maybe I'm high on copium, but I thought Dune 2 was incredible. Mahler takes are always so L. His energy drains the hype out of everything. <laughs> yeah, L take Mahler. Fuck I yeah. really like Dune 2. I feed um, off everyone else's hype. It gives me power. I don't feel like Mahler's even really shitting on it. He just isn't super invested in it. Mahler Dude, feels... is shitting on it. <laughs> if you don't have hyper passion for a hype thing, then you're like, oh, wow, you ruined the mood. Well, yeah, but I feel like you're not sitting there like fucking bashing it, saying it's like shit. You're saying that you couldn't really get invested in it. That's like a really extremely well-made movie that doesn't have the character depth or like uh, mm. exploration that you're looking for i mean it, to me it's just kind of funny because like obviously some of these people are very unfamiliar with me so they don't know about how like i nerdgasm about like loads of things y y there's other streams where i'm like the annoying one who's trying to defend and make good of a thing while everyone's like eh, okay but like they don't know about any of this i'm just sitting here like yes i'm the soul sucker that's fine i don't really well, care you're on a stream you gotta understand you, you know it's gonna be different depending on what stream you're on you're on a stream with me i'm obviously one of the most positive people on the internet yeah yeah so you in turn are gonna be viewed as like super negative about everything <laughs> that's just how it works i would say it's a it's, he critiques everything there isn't too much that he i've seen that he like really likes but also it's like do you want to watch something do you want to watch a video about someone praising something or would you rather watch something about you know, a video about someone sort of dismantling and you know explaining the reasons as to why they didn't like this or that i mean my I, I would say that he's praising two different tv shows yeah hmm. i i would say that one primarily what we're talking about here we've reviewed several episodes of the bad batch which is um in my opinion pretty dog shit um shout out batcher <laughs> but, I mean, Mahler already on this show several times is like, well, 
basically every week defends Andor because of how much he loves it. So like, yeah, I would say even of the very few things we've talked about on these Stargriff streams, uh, and Andor gets brought up every single week. So there's that. Well, yeah, and I mean, if we're going to get like, you know, very specific of all the different pieces of media we've referenced, I've highlighted plenty that I love. Like, yeah. we were just talking about Blade Runner earlier. It's just a reference, right, in, in the air. Um, Arcane, that's come up. I think we've talked before about animated shows that are like excellent or whatever. Um, even in comparison to Bad Batch, there are shows that I like think have done what they are trying to do, but much better. We were talking about, remember last week we mentioned Shogun? Um, I recently started watching mm -hmm. the Gentleman TV show. It's excellent so far. I've heard Gentleman's really fucking good. Isn't that a... Is that a German one that... Uh... German? No, no, that that one's... They're English in it, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I was thinking of that one that just yeah, got I'm... brought up the other day. Or other Super Chat. The I've thing heard good things like, about if, Gentleman. If people... Because I, I, it's not the first time I've had this for years. Like, you hate everything. So it's like, okay, but like... What about my arguments, though? <laughs> like... I don't really care. Even if, if I think. did hate everything. Yeah. What about my argument makes that change? Yeah. For every unbridled rage, there's an unbridled praise. I try. I do. Uh, I, I assume my fans have noticed at this point, but I try and inject a praise segment into all my rages. Of there's, just um, sorry, boys. There's someone at my door. I just got to go deal with this. Right back. Okay. Um, I'll read super chats. Chief sure. Waifu for two. I hate Disney. Even more after reading HTE. Thank you, Chief Waifu. Trippy Truth. Number for 35 months. Thanks. Um, TK for two. Ryan, have you seen Generation Kill? I have heard people say that I should watch that before, but I don't think I've ever seen that. Generation Kill. Yeah, I haven't seen that. Yeah, you are the, the second or third person that's recommended me that. So I need to I need to actually watch it. Justin Martins for 10. Heard Mahler discuss on OB Ketchup. Uh, curious, Tier Star Wars Theory and Ryan's thoughts. Would you guys give up the prequels if meant sequels go away? Or maybe a chance to re-roll, as Mahler put it? I wouldn't. Yeah, I would. <laughs> like a, a re-roll meaning we get another shot at me. Even George Lucas, I said I wouldn't mind him having a re-roll of it. Oh, a re-roll of the sequels or of everything? No, no. The, the pre so kill the sequels, and then I think the question was like, would you kill the prequels to kill the sequels? And I think me and Drinker were talking about that, and I said I would happily re-roll the prequels, and I don't mind who makes it particularly. Obviously, I don't want fucking like Ryan Johnson or anything, but like I would happily have George try it again with everything he knows. I'd be curious for him to try again. Yeah, I, I would hope that it, we wouldn't get something worse, but I'd be curious to see what he would do. Because obviously a lot of it is like he sees put more, he put more Jar Jar in it. I fucking hope so. But like a lot of it, he might be like, they didn't understand what I was trying to do. And so if he had another go, maybe he could, you know, execute it a bit better or whatever. But yeah, I, you know, I, would, I wouldn't mind a re-roll on the prequels. I wouldn't care to have a re-roll on the sequels. I'd want to scrap them, you know? Yeah. I don't know if I would give it, if I would erase the prequels to erase the sequels, though. That's a tough one. Um... Robert, his dudeness for 199. Fat Mace, the cholesterol strikes back. Uh, Zach Gilbert for two. Twitter, Mark Hamill ruined Mark Hamill for me. John is theory for Swedish 20. Paul stabbing the Baron look awkward and slow. A little bit. Well, Baron was <laughs> laying there like a slug. <laughs> didn't, he didn't need to be super quick about it. But uh, yeah. True. Hello, grandfather. Uh, trippy truth for five. Sup, boys? Just popped in to say love y'all. Can't wait to order my first theory saber tomorrow. Stupid stoked. Thank you, trippy truth. Yeah. Los Domino Man for Canadian 10. Wasn't magic introduced in one of the Ewok movies? Now that's canon. <laughs> uh, I. It's been a long ass time since I was a child to watch the Ewok movies. So potentially. I could believe some, it. There's some weird shit they did in the Ewok movies. Um, legend thriller for two. My super chats were not missed. My bad. Hey, they're good. Aiden JK member for 18 months. Hello, that's a year and a half. Eric S for five. Have you all read Mistborn? And would a movie be received well? I haven't read it. Mahler can't read. No. Um, oh shit, my nullith fell off for Argentinian 20. Ryan, are you a fan of Conan the Barbarian from 1982? 
Is that the uh, the Arnie version? Oh, I can't remember if it was 1982 or not. I can check. It is the Arnie yeah, version. Yeah. yeah, that one's fucking cool. Um, Mega Spidey Man for five euros. By the way, that's Chris Stuckman's Rogue One Phantom Menacing vid. Mauler on getting too rosy-eyed over Rogue One, like with Phantom Menace. Uh I mean, well, cause, but Rogue One is like better than every, like almost everything fucking Disney's put out. There's uh, certainly the fucking final act, you know? Yeah. I haven't seen it in a while, so I can't speak on it that much anymore. Like, uh, I certainly don't remember the first two acts of the film other than Sword Rare in it. My impression of Rogue One was a super mid film, almost, yeah. like, almost forgettable until the final like 20 minutes. Um, I just like K2SO. K2SO is fine. Um, but I think that for me, it was like irritating too to see a gender swap Kyle Katarn and Jan Ors with Andor and uh, Jin Urso basically gender swapping the roles to steal the Death Star plans. They'll play Dark Forces, guys. They just released the new one or uh, the new re not really a remaster, but a retweak, <laughs> whatever the fuck they're called, re release. Mm -hmm. Trek Anderson for two. Did they bring back Ezra just to replace Luke? Only time will tell. Yeah, I don't know. Filoni, show us the way. Robbie Peppers for 10. I saw on Twitter a post where Jake Lloyd, uh, Jake Lloyd Smither said he was open to being in new Star Wars projects. How do you feel about that? Wait, Jake Lloyd's mother? Is that what you meant? What? <laughs> so if you, it says Jake Lloyd and then it says Smither, like <laughs> Smither, like it spelled like Smithers from Simpsons. <laughs> So I didn't know exactly what he meant, but I think he meant Jake Lloyd's mother and like some things got ran in between there. Was she saying that he would be available to do most Star Wars stuff? I, I Based on the article that we read, I don't think that's the case. I think she said he loves it. Like he likes Star Wars. I don't feel like he's in a mental state to be in more Star Wars projects. Um, and if he, any recovery he had, the fact that he was given an Ahsoka Tano action figure, that'll probably push him over the edge again, to be honest. So, um, But it didn't feel to me... Maybe I missed it. I just skimmed over it so we could get to the parts I was looking for. But it sounds like he's doing better, but I don't think he's in a state to yeah. get back in the business, from what it sounds like. Ginger Adventure for five. EFAP for the Acolyte. I know Mahler's been getting crazy, uh, going crazy, getting the Lord of the Ring EFAPs re-uploaded. X-Ray Girl is supposed to watch The Prestige today. Hey, I'm interested to hear what she thinks of it. But um, don't know on that one. There's a good chance of it, though, that we do the Acolyte, yeah. Star Wars Ironside becomes a channel member. Stu Baca, New Zealand 5. Jimmy Kimball, writer. Uh, Trump's lightsaber color would be orange, but you wouldn't see him use it because he's behind bars. Cue the applause and elites to seal clap. Uh, uh -huh. It's official... It's official ZZ for five. Thanks, Ryan, for taking my question very seriously last week. Keep it crumming, buddy. <laughs> Are you the one that asked that shit? Keep uh, it crumming. Mr. Bishop Esquire for 10. On the subject of books, I think you boys would enjoy Shadow the Conqueror by Shad M. Brooks. It's got a tight story and awesome magic system. Shadowversity. I have it right behind me, actually. Um, Max Preto for five. It's always crazy to me that Lucasfilm hasn't tried to cash in with massive open world RPG Star Wars game. Choose your own path style, a gold mine. Uh, Star Wars Ironside for one nine nine next week. Can you guys have Melvin on as a fourth? I'm not sure what the plan is, but we'll we'll see. Thanks, Star Wars say. Ironside. Uh, JV for Canadian Seven was Anakin. Uh, was Anakin was panicking as Master Ben abandoned him with blackened limbs. Was he thrashing visions, flashing of Ben and Padme smashing? I'd need a napkin. Okay. It's beautiful. It is. Rolls right off the tongue. Yeah. Uh, Mikey Gussler for 10 bucks. What's up, Mikey? Hey. Bought my tickets to see Shrek 2 20th anniversary in theaters next month. Rumor has it the release and a remaster of Shrek 2, the game this year. We played and stream it. I don't think I'm going to be playing that, but. I think I streamed. One of the GameCube Shrek games. Shrek is a legend, and he deserves to be back in popular culture. Let's be honest. 
Bro, after Puss in Boots, the end of Puss in Boots, when they teased yeah. like the next Shrek Oof. movie, I was hyped. I was hyped as hyped. fuck for that. That's Avengers level, you know? It's like, come on. <laughs> yes, exactly. Bring back Farquaad. Well, Farquaad's brother. Uh, we'll just do that. His name would be, be Farquaad too, right? Maybe even shorter. <laughs> um, The fuck was I? I saw that sh there was like a meme the other day that was like, uh, guys, keep in mind that a princess married this over a short guy. Just a picture of Shrek. <laughs> I saw that too. <laughs> short kings on the Suicide Watch, you know? Like, yeah. Damn. Like a, the richest dude in the fucking <laughs> land, but he was short, so she married a fucking ogre. <laughs> Do you remember that movie? God, there's so many fucking amazing jokes. Do you remember when he arrives to, for the first time? He's meeting Fiona, and he's on his horse, and he has like armor, uh, armor legs. Yeah, that he sits in, or they pop him out of them. <laughs> it's just it's fake. It's so funny. Like that's a perfect the argument we had last week about the the kids stuff versus like for kids. Oh fuck yeah, Shrek's Shrek. amazing. Shrek is like an amazing example of something that's clearly you know made for kids, but it, there's so many different layers to the things they say and the humor they use at times that it's so appealable to everybody. The references Absolutely, they yeah. have that kids aren't even going to understand. Um, Millsy, number for twenty five months. Thank you, Jay for one nine nine. Theory, why defend Dave when he's hurt Star Wars on repeat? Uh, Mikey Gussler for five. Have you seen the Slimer popcorn bucket AMC's release of the new Ghostbusters? I hope Ryan's idea of Jar Jar Binks popcorn bucket becomes true. Did I have an idea for a Jar Jar popcorn bucket? Yeah, I think so. What did I say? I don't remember. I guess in a way, we all want that, right? Or well, I don't know. A Jar Jar bucket? Yeah. I mean, I'd be fine with that. The mm -hmm. but yeah, the Slimer AMC bucket looks fucking cool. Um, I'm definitely going to go get one. I'm really not looking forward to uh, Frozen Empire or whatever that's called. I wasn't a big fan of the new Ghostbusters movie. What about you? Did you see it? See what? Sorry. The new Ghostbusters movie that came out like two years oh. ago. You know, I never did. And I was, uh, I was going to see it, right? And this is a big thing that happens that I think is super important. When someone recommends something to you, they're like, yes, yes, you should see it. And you're like, oh, yeah. You know, like, why? And it's like, oh, it's... um. I mean, you know, it's uh, they do, you know, it's it, like they they do a job of like, it's, you know, it's it's not like 2016 Ghostbusters. It's it's done. It's it's like respectful. Yeah, it's sort of. But it's like it's man. funny you bring that up because <laughs> I was literally talking about this the other day about Stranger Things. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a single episode of Stranger Things. Um, everybody that I say I've never seen it to, they're like, "What? How have you not seen it? You should definitely see it." But I haven't got like any. This is why you should. Other than oh, it's great. It's like half passion where I'm like, oh, you know, I'm getting a sense that I should probably push other things to the top of the watch this now list, not this. Mm -hmm. So I haven't seen Afterlife. And honestly, have you seen how it's like kind of turned? I mean, Drinker and Gary don't have great things to say about it these days compared to when it came out. Yeah, like I felt like I was in the minority because I wasn't shitting on it, but I was just like, it's not compelling to me. Um, I can on one hand, I could see that it was made with a lot of like great intentions in terms of honoring so much stuff about what made the first one special and what people care about and you know the love and tribute that they did to some of that shit but at the same time I didn't like the movie you yeah know? and um, uh, so. I'm not like I'm not super jazzed for the new one either it'll be based on what everyone says yeah we're talking about sorry. ghostbusters oh uh, sorry guys yeah the my guy showed up we're, uh, we're building a, a massive 10 foot dog house and it's like there's like freaking Neat. construction like in my garage now and there's so that we're like unloading everything <laughs> we did uh we blasted through many yeah messages. we're on we're almost done we're on wolf spain member for one month generation kill is the third series from band of brothers creators it was bob the pacific and generation kill it takes place during desert storm i think yeah i i looked it up while we we're uh after you mentioned it it does look good so i'll watch it how much money for a mauler face <laughs> sends two bucks <laughs> <laughs> realistically if someone were to come to you and say hey we'll give you x amount for a face reveal what would that amount be I, you can find my face right i used to stream non-stop all day just games with a face cam i don't do it now because i find it more convenient it's out there everyone yep maria says ryan's master of airs yet it's on apple tv i have not apple tv is like the one thing i don't have 
Um, so if it's on Apple TV, I probably haven't seen it. I've heard really good things about Masters of Air. If you're interested in something a little different, I would suggest a series called Generation War. It's like Band of Brothers, but from perspective off the average German enlisted civilian. Okay. Gen Kill follows first wreck marines. Iraq invasion. All right. How many guys did you fillet in Navy? Zero. Thank God. True clown, clown wars? wars? Shit clown wars. That's what Hell Disney yeah. Star Wars is. Mahler, Prestige is one of the best movies I've ever seen. Any chance of an unbridled praise? So I've said before, Rob, I mean, I'll just say here yeah, that Prestige is one of a couple of projects where I'm almost like afraid to cover them because if I didn't do it right, it would upset me. They mean everything to me. So mm. I'll get around to it at some point, uh, maybe. Prestige. But yes, I'd like to make a video on the Prestige someday. I'd like to watch that. What about Inception? Fuck that movie. What about Inception? I'm 50 50 on Inception. I don't actually hear it. <laughs> like, I remember the craze when it fucking came out. Yeah. And I like remembered nothing about that movie after I walked out. I don't know. Here's five dollars to pay you to talk about The Last Jedi some more. That'll take forever. And Mahler signed up for two hours and we're already at three. <laughs> <laughs> and literally before the show, he's like, I got something to do after this. Do you think we can stick to two hours? We're already an hour over. So that's why I'm trying to go quick. Have started to look forward to this. Y'all rock. Awesome. Yeah. Sweet. Thanks, yeah, Chad. Who, who finds this podcast to be more of like a, you're starting to look forward to it and you're like, oh, Monday. Yeah, right on. We got Stargrift. I'm getting a lot of those comments lately. It's nice. Love you guys. And these streams, dynamic, are amazing. Keep it going. Question for Ryan. Did you get enjoyment out of any the Clone Wars episodes? And if yes, which ones? It, it, it depends what you mean. Is there shit that I, that I looked at and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. That's kind of neat. Like not taking it seriously. Yeah, like there, there's moments, um, and I think uh, you know some of the stuff between Anakin and Obi Wan is, is like their brotherhood at times is good, but overall didn't like it. Um, there's some clone stuff in there that's good, but I feel like the clones were done so much better before TCW, um, and that all got like tossed out. So it's tough sometimes. Our quad's brother, near quad. <laughs> Why does Molly? Uh... Is there anything that should be cut out of Andor? Andor. <laughs> Aww. I'm kidding. The joke. The jokey. I would like uh, it if it wasn't if it wasn't Cassie and Andor. If it was like a different character that we didn't know, like know their fate already. Um, right back. I, I actually would like that. Um, obviously, Ryan, it wouldn't be named in. Andor. <laughs> what? <laughs> you tag back in. Theory's out. All right. Um, forget saving Star Wars. Is it even possible to repair the barometer? So many people settle for any modern Star Wars as long as it's not as bad as the sequel trilogy. I suppose um, to a degree, the barometer, I assume they mean like the detection of quality. We need to fix that. But like that'll always be the way that it is. Most like, like you know, like us three, for example, we're going to have a very different perspective than the average person who's just watching TV does because it's kind of our job to break it down. Right. Like, we're, we're paid to do analysis, and so when we watch something actively, we're still thinking about all those kinds of things. And so if one was to say that we have a better way of discerning quality and what should we do about those who enjoy that which is shit, it's like, well, to an extent, you know, the, that that's, like, completely normal and fine. I suppose um, Star Wars might be given a bit of an exception because we have, like, it might be able to get away with more because if it had, like, a really shit thing but it had Darth Vader in it, i.e. Kenobi, then um, a lot of people at the time were like, oh, fuck yeah, that was amazing. Did you did you see the part where there was blue on their face and then he went evil and it was red on his face? It's like, yeah. Did you see the interview? Yes. Where, uh, where, where that wasn't even yes. an artistic thing. It just fucking happened randomly. Yes. I, well, I it, love it was the, the actors, right? So they know to the time. everything, yeah. It was fucking insane to me that probably the most thematically meaningful thing that happens in that was was candidly done just like by Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen being like, hey, do you guys notice these lights make light? <laughs> it's like, yeah, we could we could maybe use that. Because uh, obviously I didn't think it was very subtle, but knowing that it wasn't even the fucking script is something else, man. But yeah, I as for you know saving Star Wars, maybe it has to start with people recognizing where the substantive Star Wars is. Just like, well, I mean that's just down to everybody talking about what they believe is the best route for Star Wars forward, but in a way, that's what this podcast is about, right? 
I think the three of us have a different view on how to save it, but that we can hash it out. I think, like I said, it'll be really interesting when, um, like, a, like Mandalorian and Grogu, if that came out tomorrow, can you imagine, like, the discussion on that between the three of us would be pretty fucking interesting, I think. Yeah. I would imagine it would be very interesting. Uh, I don't think I'd love it. I don't think you'd love it. No. <laughs> we'll give it a chance, though. I'll watch it and judge for myself, though. Hell yeah. Um, Max Preto for five. Any of you play Final Fantasy Rebirth? Thoughts? I never made it through the first Final Fantasy remake game. That was two games ago. Not that I didn't like it. I just... I got nothing for Final Fantasy. I've not played any of them. I played Final Fantasy 15. Um, I don't know. Not, not, not big into it. Jared Smart for five or for 10. Sup, boys? Wasn't sure if you remember me. I'm the pilot who asked about your perfect sandwich. Ryan, <laughs> I'm still waiting for an answer. Side note, I'd love to explore a June to Paul more. Cool stream. June to Paul is pretty fucking cool. Um, perfect sandwich. I don't remember you at all, Jared. I remember that question. But it's my time perfect, you answered, I guess, Ryan. My perfect sandwich? Yeah. Um, I'd probably go with something simple like fucking wheat bread. Probably do turkey, bacon, the like shredded lettuce, tomato. Um, banana peppers and jalapenos. And as far as cheese goes, I'd probably either do. I'd probably do fucking provolone, to be honest. I'd probably do provolone on top and then mayo and spicy mustard. That'd be my perfect sandwich. All right. I'm trying to give you a bang for your buck there. Hell yeah. Um, Mo Zamboni made a thumbnail draft in replies for the show. Well, I can't share it right now, but I do have it pulled up. I do have it pulled up right now. Ooh, pepper jack cheese. Good idea, though. Good idea. Might change it to that. That ain't a Scooby-Doo ass sandwich. The only thing is having <laughs> both banana peppers and jalapenos on it. That's a like that's a wild choice. All right, I get that, but that's uh that's mine. That's what I want to do. Uh, lean back, have a snack, take a nap for five. Doesn't magical resurrection slash reanimation undercut Palpatine's character and motivations? He could have kept those hocus pocus chicks on retainer. There's, it'll evolve out every time. It just always does. Introducing systems like that, it's going to create so many problems down the line. And as far as I know from you guys, it hasn't even been explained yet. How long has it been since this was introduced? Night Sisters probably made their appearance in maybe season two or three of Clone Wars. I don't think it was all the way to four. Um, and how many years ago oh, was that? Like 2009. Um, <laughs> do you think it's about time we have an explanation of what the fuck it is? Uh, cheese on top for one nine nine. Wish Andor was only about the serial guy, not joking. Yeah, well, I uh, Cyril is super interesting to me. I'm not even kidding. Uh, Chatamain for one nine nine. Thoughts on Forrest Gump? Good movie. One of the best movies about a retard I've ever seen. Hell yeah. Um, Rain Man's also up there. Uh. Thunder Khajiit, member for 25 months. Still can't believe Mauler's here. Been a huge fan since first Last Jedi ran. Absolutely amazing group on here. Love you guys. All-star cast for sure. Hell Sorry. yeah. My apologies. Uh, did you guys read all of them? Almost. Rossi for two. Ryan, how do you feel about public subs over others? Um, I haven't had too many public subs, actually. I haven't gone. I just go there for groceries. I don't usually get a sub from there. Grim knack for two. Mahler's hilarious how no one understands the robo. It's under it's hilarious how no one understands the robo. No one understands the robo? The robo? So he means like K2SO or is it someone else? Maybe he's talking about you. Um thanks for providing the grift. Oh, oh sorry. Loki's no. I know what he's talking about. It was a hypothetical I created and everyone like didn't understand it. 
I was saying like oh, a the robot with, with no bias or whatever. Yeah, like if it was okay. if it was fed events and then it simply feeds out whether or not they connect. That's, that was just trying to create. A, that's what it would look like to have no bias when trying to assess cause and effect. And then everyone was like, "You can't do that as a person." I was like, "No, but like just entertain the idea for a second, please." Yeah, but but it's like you, you're never gonna get there because of like the different things we've experienced and seen how you look at things. Of course. But if you but if you do the best you can to acknowledge where your biases lie and things like that, you can get as close as possible to that theoretical unbiased thing if you're attempting to do that. Yeah, and yeah. I don't see it as a bad thing when you have a bias. I see it as like cool to find out what they are and sort of be aware of them, you know, as you're working through it. Like there are yeah. just things that we all like more than other things that we want to see them more, and that's totally fine. Dylan, thanks right. for providing the griff. My dog Loki's birthday is today. How old are your pups, Theory? Do Mahler and Ryan have any? I do not. I don't have a dog. I got two. Uh, Loki is a year and a few months, and Rain is four. So I'm uh, hand building them a big dog house with a buddy, and uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be cool. That's their gift, so you can fit both of them. It's a nice little project. Citadel Arc Ryan. Glad to have watched Dune 2 twice. Loved it. Interesting. Sweet. It was crazy when I was going to pay for a movie ticket. I was like, wow, 30 bucks. And um, Canadian. And I was like, I remember when I was a kid, t movie tickets were like, like eight, nine dollars. It's just crazy how things have changed. But I guess what also you... it's like box shit. What's the Citadel Arc? I'm, I saw that super chat. Citadel Arc in the Clone Wars? Yeah, yeah. Is that when they're rescuing... Uh... Mm. Fucking... That little, that little motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> Peel? Evan Peel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's gotta be that one, isn't it? Mm. I, don't, I don't remember enough of it to tell you whether I like the... That happened on not. March 11th, so that would be today. Well, that's crazy, actually. Um... But yeah, I don't, I don't remember enough specifics about it to tell you. Sorry. I don't think it was with Peel. Was it? Oh, what? Uh, was it? The third season of the Clone Wars. Chat was that with Evan Peel? Hmm. I thought they were like trying to go save him or some shit. Um. Here, share my screen real oh, quick. Oh, Peel and though. Tarkin. Got it. Yeah. This is Mo Zamboni. He sent this in. <laughs> this <is fun. laughs> there's, our, there's our thumbnail for today. You know what? I actually... <laughs> <laughs> Bro, what's with my neck, man? <laughs> Why can't I see these? What do you mean? What do you mean? You're right there. Oh, there we go. I got it. It's about 30 minutes worth of work. Missing some assets make me make what you asked for. Also, like life and fatherhood calls, but hopefully this gives you an idea of the skills. Look at me, you, man. <laughs> that looks looks great. Do, do I have your permission to use that? You all seen Ryan or the guy? The guy. That's Mo Zamboni. I'm guessing. May thy knife chip and shatter. May thy knife chip and shatter. Yeah, why do they say that? Is that like some... Something meaningful? Oh, it's thank you, like, Mo. Yeah, respecting the battle. <laughs> <It's hilarious>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to edit it a little bit later after the stream. Make it all like, make me all white. Here, did you see that John Cena clip? No. Oh, he's no. like almost naked doing the costume design thing i saw i saw clips pop, pop up but i did not watch it um that's the arc where the jedi gets killed by some dogs well that's marks the end of the soupies and i guess the end of the conversation uh, i know mahler's got to bounce um i'm Miss still gonna be Mark gump is low-key kind of a mary sue though is he not well i don't know if he's a mary sue because he's like retarded He's like very good at like a select few things. More so, he just like bumbles into circumstances. Like, mm. is is it a, is it 
is he a Mary Sue because he happened to be like be present when a bunch of really impactful things happened that he didn't really have too much to do with? They just happened. I don't know. Just kind of more so. He's good at ping pong though. Funny. He's really good at ping pong and he's really fucking good at running. Other than that, he's got fucking AIDS probably. So I don't know if that's Mary Sue. I saw those chili adverts. I did see that. Clever that as hell. Funny. So clever. Yeah. But anyways, guys, we appreciate the show today. I uh, hope you join us next week for the next Star Griff where we'll talk about Bad Batch episodes 6 and 7. And then also Mahler and I will engage in our first debate regarding the sequel trilogy, the prequel trilogy about Revenge of the Sith and how Anakin's uh, fall, he claims, should have been better. That's what we're going to do now. <laughs> i got to fucking rewatch the Gullet Notes. <laughs> I'm not, you know, not going to rewatch. I'm just going to recollect from <laughs> memory. Um yeah, but why I'm would go you want to stream... watch a good Star Wars movie when instead you can watch two episodes of The Bat Batch? Exactly, dude. Exactly. You're making uh, me gonna... do both of those things. Hey. <laughs> My whole channel's been talking about the Revenge of the Sith and the prequel trilogy, so yeah, it's... I know it like the back of my hand at this point. Um, but I'll oh, probably dude. give it another watch. Um, I also want to watch the... What was the movie you said? The Ritualist or something? You want know, The Prestige? The Prestige, yes. Right. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. I have no idea what it's about. Theory should come with notes. They're all up here, baby. Comes with the prequel trilogy. They're all up here. I write them on my arm. Yeah. So then when Mahler, like, you know, comes at me with stuff, I'll be like... Yeah, write it right here. If, if I showed you, it actually says, Batcher is gay. Omega is gay. Hunter and Wrecker are retarded. Crosshair <laughs> dope. That's what it says. Mauler, do you have a Mauler replica mask? Would you ever wear one on stream? I don't, and I don't know, probably not. Would you ever sell them? Maybe. There you have it. Okay, guys. I'll see you guys on uh, Theories Arcade. You don't have to go anywhere. Once the stream ends, you'll be teleported over to that lobby. Uh, follow the boys on their social media. I've linked in the description. And um, yeah, love you all. Hope you enjoyed tonight's fun episode. See you later. Bye. And you're sounding like a seven.